I should have known you'd find yourself here, despite all my efforts. It appears you are guided here by fate. What a fascinating concept. In spirit. Right, so yeah. our adventure begins um, on what may feel like to many of you the beginning of the end to your story. With five years having passed since the loss of your leader and a close dear friend, the Iron Oath Mercenary Company is not what it once was. The days of noble fights in the name of the common folk are now replaced with whatever can provide the most coin, fill the most bellies. Yet, together, you ride onward, always pushing forward, trying to find a way. And on this occasion, the way leads you towards the small, yet consequential town of Daggerford. Whilst many consider the town to be merely a stopover on the way to more important destinations, such as Baldur's Gate or Neverwinter, you each know that your history has been forged here and that your future now lies in the tracks ahead. As each of you independently ponder this, the sounds of creaking wagon wheels, the rushing water of nearby streams and local farmers working the land fill your ears. Birds chirp as the sun begins to set on this beautiful yet cold winter evening. Looking around you, you can see dewdrops leaking from the tarpaulin bonnets of your wagons. And beyond that, you can see faces that turn towards you, each noting the sizable group that passed through their land before finishing up for another day. Eventually, though, they all fade into the distance, and on the path ahead, you can now all make out the sight of the large stone walls, the looming presence of Morning Glow Tower, and as if conjured from a children's storybook itself, Ducal Castle sitting on the hill on the eastern side of town. You are now arriving in Daggerford. I shall move you to the little intro map I have prepared. Everyone rolling. Roll initiative. <laughs> 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 Christ, Kieran hasn't spotted that yet. What? <laughs> one second. Oh, I just... oh, love it. It's great. Right, so if you'd like to all decide where you want to sit on each car, there's only there's a someone needs to pilot the third car along. Um, I'll say that, and there's room for. Um, like four on each cart really but obviously so we'll say three on each cart because so Torres okay. is piloting the first cart Jeronas is piloting the second cart Grundle West is piloting the last cart so um, okay. take your pick I will pilot the third cart for I have proficiency in land vehicles very nice mm. 
weak Nigel's just hanging out on the back. La, 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 la. <laughs> so, um, we'll start off in the front cart then, considering George and uh, Hannah decided to take that. Um, Taurus turns to both of you and she says, um, Always my favourite sight along the Sword Coast, wouldn't you agree, Helen? It's right. She turn and then she turns to you and looks at you, Farrah, and she says, uh, apparently the, the Duchess is sending her bastard nephew, uh, Neville Daggerson, to meet us at the gates so he can uh, accompany us to the castle. Apparently he's a bastard in more than one way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to see. Well, um, I'm guessing this job involves him if he's involved. I've not heard great things about his character, but certainly her tales about the weight of his coin purse. And she gives you a little wink. <laughs> coin isn't everything, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that it'll be a some some mission that he'll give us. So if he's a bastard, then maybe it's not a great one. And she just uh, smiles at you, and then we'll cut to the the uh, second wagon. Osdred, you're sitting with Dilby Featherstone, uh, Drew and Ass Pilot in the car, and Selfie Photo sitting across from you. Is there anything you'd like to say to them, or would you? are you happy to just ride in the no, car? Sitting there with his armour on, he's got his um, pendant with a sort of green topaz from his neck, and he's just kind of thumbing it, thinking about Dumathoin. Dumathoin. Right, in that case, we'll cut to the uh, the third cart. As Surathos, you are piloting it with uh, Amaranth Crane and Pimkin in the back, accompanied by the large form, which is kind of like slightly tilting the wagon with the, the weight <laughs> from weak Nigel uh, sitting at the very back. Um, is there anything you would say to each other on the journey into Daggerford as now you can see the, the, the walls ahead of the castle town? Uh, Nigel. Yeah, pitch. I've uh, I've got an itch at, right at the top of my back. Could you get it for me, please? And he leans over and just starts like prodding him with a massive finger. <laughs> <laughs> a little higher. Like this. <laughs> with Nigel <laughs> leaning, has the cart untipped? Yes, it has. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's great, Nigel. Can you keep that up for a little bit? Thank you. Yes, of course, bitch. And he's still like, he's just like leaning back and kicking his legs off the back like a child <laughs> and poking pitch in the back of the neck. Ammer and Crane kind of leans over and he's like, oh, do let me get your other shoulder, pitch. And just start sort of <laughs> start scratching into the shoulder as well. And Pimkin's like, yeah, let me get some as well. And he sort of starts <laughs> scratching in as well. So, uh, uh, okay, thank you, gentlemen, one and all. Ah. And Nigel leans back, and the the cart tilts really rapidly. <laughs> Fucking hell, Nigel, watch out! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Pimkin like looks to Hammer and Crane, and looks to you, and then sort of looks at Pitch, but obviously you can't see him because you're driving. And he says, uh, "Back in Daggerford, eh?" <laughs> I been Daggerford before. You've been here before, Nigel, only once though. Oh yes. We yes. used to all come here a lot. Been a few years now though. What significance Daggerfoot? Well, it's uh it's got aspirations that are bigger than it actually is, but the Duchess is very nice. She likes to look after us and uh, show us a good time, so <laughs> good time. And uh, Amor and Crane going to leave Zoni's like, yes, a good time. God, and, such uh, a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll cut back to the first car as uh, Taurus, as you're getting pretty close to the gates now, and you can see more and more sort of town guard, um, people sort of carrying different things into the um, into the town through the sort of, there's like a moated, uh, like a portcullis <laughs> that's pulled up. And, um, Sorry. 
It's all right. Um, I've just spotted Chad Bradwick's token. <laughs> yes. And that was what really laughing. I'm glad. That boy ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure I just quickly show that on the stream thing. Just otherwise, it won't be able to see it. There we go. That's Chad Bradwick for everyone. Right. Um, so on the first wagon ahead now, um, Torres uh, turns to you, uh, Farah, and she goes. Uh, Looks like that's the bastard up ahead. As uh, Neville, if you'd like to describe your character to the group and how you're trying to gain the attention of the party. Sorry, you want... So, uh, if you'd like to describe Neville to everyone, Stefan, and how he's trying to get the attention of the wagons as you're waiting for them. Ah, oh, okay, so he's... You keep cutting out for me, Steph. He's turned his sensitivity to the yeah. other way now. Damn it! Right. <laughs> Just leave it out on was... automatic. Yeah, don't put it on automatic. That's fine. Right, is that better? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, Never will be standing there, anxiously looking forward, and the moment he catches sight of everyone, he um, tries to start straightening himself up, trying to look uh, smart, proper, um, and. Uh, as he thinks that you're near enough in uh, voice range, definitely to call out to you. What does like, he say? Hello there. <clears throat> <clears throat> One moment. <clears throat> Hello there, travellers. Fucking love it. Been waiting so long to hear that voice. <laughs> right, Daggerson, right? That's my name, Neville Daggerson. Pleasure to meet you all. She kind of like. Puts, she like pulled the wagon start to pull up now as she kind of gets into the main aspect of Daggerford and I'll move you to the Daggerford map so you guys yes. can see right so oh. we're now on the Daggerford map let's just make sure let's see yep cool right so you are coming through the castle gates uh, in the bottom just where I'm pinging here if you can see that mm-hmm mm. No. No? Yeah, 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 I got it, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you are coming through the castle gates. Um, you, The caravans are all starting to pull up alongside here into the marketplace. Yeah, feel free to draw, drag your tokens on if you'd like. So, I'll say to you, Neville, um, you, um, you have been given the task of by the Duchess of escorting everyone from the edge of the town to the castle for dinner. Um, you're instructed with telling them what's going to happen. You're sort of um, just giving them a sort of direct route there through the town, really. Um, but it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, so I'll leave it in your good hands. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh... You must have all been travelling for quite a long time to get here, I imagine. You must all be uh, tired, hungry, thirsty. If you'd uh, like to all follow me, I'll take you home. We'll get you all sorted. Yeah. Fat is going to follow him. Yeah, so you all get off the carts at this point, and you're all following behind Neville. Um, do you just lead them up through the town, Neville, up Duke's Way? Um, yeah, he'd probably take, yeah, just the most direct route. And okay. um, trying to just make small talk along the way. You'd just be saying, like, um, so uh, when were you last here? Just for everyone's uh, reference, you would all, like, your last main mission here was, let me just double check for you. Uh, da -da -da, the Iron Oath missions. The last main mission here was uh, the Gorilla Gorillas mission, which was in 1489. This is set in 1491, so it's two years ago you were here. So everybody except Nigel. I think everyone except... Well, I think Nigel was here for that mission, wasn't he? Nigel joined in... When did Nigel join? Just double check. Nigel's only been with him for a year. I have got the timeline up here. Uh, yeah, it's Nigel joined just before that mission. Yeah. Okay. The Gorilla Gorillas. Has everyone else has got really big names on the uh, map? Yeah. Yeah, the names are really big. I can turn. It's just because this uh, 
Yeah, the map is. Uh, I can turn them off for this part if you'd like. Makes it a bit easier. Yeah, maybe just for the zoom. Yeah. Bits, yeah. That's fine. Shouldn't be too many Thanks. of these. Yeah. Who am I? Bear with me one second. <laughs> do, 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 do. There you go. So yeah, never just called out. Not to anyone in particular, just whoever's listening and willing to respond. Would any of you respond? I missed what it was, sorry. Yeah, I didn't hear that. He was asking, <clears throat> when was the last time you all came here? Oh, that was about two years ago, wasn't it, Pitch? What do you think? Uh, give or take two years, yes. Yeah. We um, did some work for the Duchess then. And in the background, didn't see you before, Mr. Daggerson. Are you from around here? Uh, yes, this is uh, <clears throat> what I now call my own. Um, I'm, you know, part of the family now, so uh, everything they own, uh, I've got a little bit myself. The, uh, the, the Duchess's family. Yes, yes. Oh, I, um, I apologize, I had not heard of you before. No, no, I'm, I'm, you know, somewhat new, you could say. Uh, I've been, new uh, to the family? Welcomed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. They, uh, my daddy, old, uh, Maldwin, poor fella, rest his soul. He, uh, he's my dad, you see? So, uh, once, uh, we all found that out, because I didn't actually know him when I was, when I was a little fella. So, uh, yeah, once that all came out, I came home. You know, to uh, to welcome arms, I did. Hmm. I'm surprised we didn't get the news as well. You would all oh, know yeah, that... Really. Sorry, Stefan. You would all know that Maldwin Daggerford was the previous Duke of um, Daggerford before the current Duchess, his uh, younger sister, took over. Okay. Oh no, he's got distracted again. Nigel! <laughs> Nigel, come on! <laughs> yes, yes. What's what say? Nigel, I know the gate is nice, but we have a job to do. What? Nice gate. No, Nigel, come on now. No, no going... stay, stay. And he's you... like clinging onto it like a, like a child. <laughs> no. Well, we... Nigel, we're going to a fancy house. You'll get to show off your costumes, your outfits, and speak with <laughs> other noble people. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, and he sort of comes along, like leading him by the hand, like a yeah, child. Yeah, like... Pitch would take his hand. Farrah is shaking her head. A liability. Yeah, is that one going to be a problem? Uh, he's a little oh, bit of a liability, problem. but no, I don't think so. Come on, Nigel, move your token. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm making my lunch. That's it's all right. <laughs> I shall move the token for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we are. Thank you. And I will say, on the way up the Duke's Way, you notice a number of shops. Um, you notice um, on this big building here, numbers, I'll refer to them as the numbers just because it's easier for me to ping in each one of them. And number 17, you pass a quite a famous tavern, and is the Lady Luck Tavern, dedicated to Timora. Each of you would have spent some time here, and you see... Um, as you're passing through the town, sort of the market square, the marketplace, you notice that many townsfolk are closing stalls up for the day, and many of them are heading into the Lady Luck Tavern, um, probably to wash down uh, the bitterness of the day with a nice ale after work. Um, mm -hmm. You'd also notice uh, number 16, um, the decorated man, a, a tailor's, might be of interest to you, uh, Week Nigel. Um, you also notice number 13, uh, Goblin's Cloth and Cordage. Um, and you also notice uh, number 29, the, the River Shining Tavern, where you see more workers heading inside. And um, on the very edge, you see... Uh, sorry, that's number 24. And then on the very edge of number 29, you would see um, a small inn called the Lizard's Gizzard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So, uh, what <clears throat> what exactly did you do for us last time? Um, oh my god, I forgot my notes. Uh, the gorillas, gorillas fishing, whatever that. Was. 
<laughs> oh, the gorillas. Yeah, I heard about them. Sounded like a right weird bunch they were. You would all remember that they were uh, a... That's fine, you can always ask. Remember, if you don't remember stuff, don't just assume you don't know. Because you can always ask me, and then I can remind you. Um, you would know that the Gorillas Gorillas mission was a mission that the Duchess hired you for. Um, to go out and deal with a um, an orc, um, a band of orcs that went under the that, that name was their moniker. And um, they tend to hide. They were quite a uh, problem for the... They used to hide out in the forests nearby Daggerford. Um... And they caused quite a lot of problems on the roads for travellers because they would um, use sort of stealth tactics to um, engage people. But also, you know, on that same mission, you were unfortunate enough to encounter a, an invisible stalker, which was uh, pretty horrible. But you managed to come out unscathed, thankfully. Yeah, they were causing a lot of problems on the roads, I heard. And yeah, we sorted them out. <clears throat> Yeah, it's just one of many stories I've heard about. Yeah, you sound like a right reliable bunch. So hopefully you can do us good this time too. Certainly do there our best. Are. Home sweet home. Right, so as you are each treated to an impressive sight as you make your way eastward out from the central hub that makes up the various quarters of Daggerford, um, the striking tower to your to your right here, um, you know, to be uh, Morning Glow Tower. It is uh, dedicated to Lathanda. I'm also known as the uh, the Morning Lord. Um, it's the f the, can yes. I do? A, um, can I use my stone cunning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Um, to inspect the stonework. You can indeed. Please uh, roll me a history check with your stone cunning proficiency added. So it should be a, another. Plus two. Oh, very nice. Um, Eat it. <laughs> you, um, the stone itself, you can tell is a very finely crafted stone. Probably, um, you think possibly made by sort of master, um, master, what's the blooming word? Stonemason. Um, you think it's possibly like sort of gathered from maybe the mountains um, to the north, maybe. You're not 100% sure on that exactly of its location. But you know it's um, finely crafted. You would also notice... Um, Whilst looking on it, you notice that most of the stone has been has been carved with a very um, almost like an artisan quality to it. Um, you can see on the carvings on the stone is various motifs. Um, some depicting what appears to be the sun. Um, some depicting like a muscular man holding a newborn child above him, and others that make you kind of think of like spring and like sort of stuff like that. Whoever's near him, I don't know who's near him. But he, he just turns around and he's like, I'm just not from my ancestors. And he um, continues walking. It's going to be. We're going to need subtitles for fucking Austria. I can feel it already. <laughs> he said, It's nothing on my ancestors. Okay. Um... Right. So, yes, as you. Um, you would all catch those, um, those various motifs on the walls um, as you go past. They're very large. Um, the tower itself resembles like a, a rounded kind of fortified tower. Um, but the more impressive sight is um, the castle uh, shadowing um, Morning Glow Tower ahead. More impressive and comfortably sitting on top of a steep hill. And the wide and well-trodden path that slowly climbs a long incline to the gatehouse that leaves you feeling somewhat intimidated despite knowing you were practically considered honoured guests at this point. Um, the more senior members of the Oath, you would be hit with a, a tinge of painful nostalgia. Um, you remember thinking that the walls before you looked like the strongest thing for miles around as Danish marched you up towards them with the lofty keep looming beyond. The site remains practically unchanged apart from the weathering of time that matches the signs of age upon your face. Mm -hmm. Do you head through the walls? So wait, has it been a long time since they've been in? Two years still. It's been about two years, but you were just hit with a painful tinge of nostalgia as you remember further back. Yeah, times. five years since Danish, right? Mm -hmm, correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Osbeth's going to go up to Neville. 
and he's going to say, what, <clears throat> what ails have you got in your cellar? Um, in my cellar? Why? What, what, what are you looking for? Just curious. Well, <clears throat> it's quite a grand cellar underground. we got uh, all sorts down there. Um, uh, but uh, we'll get to that, don't you worry. Good. <laughs> it was not too keen on this. Yeah. <laughs> As you head into the uh, sort of main, to the sort of castle courtyard, you um, notice that um, the small courtyard holds the Duchess's stables, like a, a smithy and sort of private grounds. And um, as you begin to congregate, the the familiar face of the Duchess um, turns the corner um, and pr- approaches you. And she is there. Sorry, sorry is there God. anything <clears throat> notably different from the two years ago, or is it just? It's fairly similar from what it was okay, before. Cool. Nothing alarming. No, nothing alarming. Definitely not. Um, as she approaches the party and she um, she approaches you and says, uh, uh, "Welcome, welcome! It's an absolute delight to see the Iron Hoof in its entirety once more." Um, Farrah smiles. Uh, feels like it's been years longer than two. <laughs> it certainly does. It's the weathering of time on all of us is a is a, a long one these days. She sort of turns to Torres and Druinas and is like, uh, how are you two doing? And Torres is like, eh, not bad. Same as always. And Druinas just says, uh, well. How about the rest of you? How, how are, how are all the failing? He like eight. <laughs> she kind of cocks her head and she's. She's only met Week Nigel once, and it was, you know, he was a very new member, so prob- he probably wouldn't have actually even met the Duchess at this point. And she kind of sort of like turns her head slightly like a confused dog and um, just sort of looks at um, looks at the new Pharaoh, and she's like, uh, uh, more, uh, more colourful characters, I see, uh, joining the Oath. Certainly uh, one of Taurus' uh, new recruits. It's Week Nigel. Uh, weak, Nigel? Yes, uh, quotation marks. <laughs> she does it with her hands. <laughs> uh, Ostrad goes down to his knee and he's like, may Drumoffwin be with you, lady. She nods to you, Ostrad, and uh, she says, you may rise. You have no... Yeah, I mean, he gives a look to everyone else. Like, <laughs> yeah, what are pitch... you doing in front of a noble? Yeah, pitch, go, pitch goes down on one knee. He's like, shit. Goes down. Nigel on to one knee. Ni- Nigel just sort of crashes to the floor like Whoa. <laughs> She she kinda of shakes her head and she's like, No, 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 none of none of this. Come on. Rise, we're all friends here. Neville kind of steps next to Morwen and sort of whispers to her, They didn't do that for me, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of whispers back and she's like, uh No, no, I don't suppose they did. I'll also just quickly reveal the Duchess <clears throat> onto the token there. So she would be here. I'll turn off the nameplate again because. So you are all gathering round, um, and the Duchess, um, the Duchess sort of turns. She's like, "Come follow. Um, the the servants <laughs> are preparing dinner as we speak." And she begins to guide you inside the castle. And uh, but before long, you find yourself in the grand foyer of Ducal Castle, which is made up of what you can see, like beautiful carpets and tapestries that are, they're all practically some shade of crimson. And as you follow her through a number of passages and up spiral staircases, she regales you with the tale of Tyndall Daggerford, a story you've all heard before, <laughs> apart from maybe you, weak Nigel. Um, uh, you would know that he's, she explains a boy of legend who once fought off a tribe of lizard folk using a mere dagger, who then went on to found Daggerford by building it on top of the once ruined Ducal Castle. And uh, I think, sorry, go on, Kieran. During this, because um, Osred isn't too interested in like human or Daggerford history, mm-hmm. he to, uh, well, I assume Weak Nigel, 
and uh, everyone around there, and he's like, I hope they die on for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it will be many things, Ostred. Oh, they have a fine plum sauce. And then he just goes back to looking at his topaz in his hand. <laughs> yeah, Michael's just staring at Morwen, like, enraptured, like, oh, magic story. <laughs> magic story. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rick Nigel already. Um, <laughs> as you follow her through a number of um, passages and up spiral staircases, um, you eventually, at each section of the castle, you can see a a great deal of guards, usually two or more at each door, um, who stand wow. to attention as you pass. And many of them actually go... Um, actually, who's got the highest passive perception? If you'd like to quickly just read them out to me. Not weak, Nigel! 15. 15. 11. Anyone got um, higher than 15? No. What's this? Passive perception. <laughs> <laughs> So, Farrah, you would be the first to notice this then. You um, notice that a number of the guards actually go wide-eyed as you pass, as it mm -hmm. appears that many recognise the, the chains you're hanging from your each of your sets of clothes and the, the coat of arms that rests upon your clothing, weapons and armour. Oh, sorry, just going to take a quick drink. Um, after a short while, you um, you are led to the Grand Dining Room. Um, what appears to be a beautiful room with a long table that spans the room and has bright red silk tablecloth upon it. And uh, the table sits below a window that beholds an awesome view over the rest of Daggerford. The window itself has a steel grill upon it and is flanked by a beautiful set of maroon curtains. Lamps and candelabras light the room which reveals a number of stuffed animals. Uh, well, like, um, not like stuffed toys, but like a... Uh, um, what's the word? <laughs> Can't remember the word for them now. Um, taxidermied. taxidermied animals. Thank you, Tom. They sure. like watch over you as you sit down for dinner, and uh, perhaps Parrot kind of cringes a bit. <laughs> perhaps meant to keep the Duchess guests on the back foot for during negotiations. Some of you think to yourself, maybe. And I will move you to the map. Was it really red? Just reds everywhere. It reds everywhere, and you can now see for yourself oh, what the Pitch room is looks camouflaged. like. Nigel's doing peekaboo with the taxidermy animals. <laughs> you should be able to all hear the sounds, hopefully. Yeah. Cool. I will periodically check if you can. Just stream sound. Cool. Right. So as you are now in this room, um, you, uh, each of you. Uh, begin to take your seats as you see servants begin rushing around you placing a banquet of meats and vegetables upon the table <clears throat> napkins upon your laps and filling your glasses with some of the finest vintages you've ever seen I'll quickly adjust all your tokens so you're the brick brick size oh Ooh, I don't know why oh wait because I'm on the fucking wrong bit yeah each I assume, I assume the duchess is on this chair yes she would be I'm just I'll put her sort of more here I can't remember how to do it with, with uh, his. So you have uh, to drag from the name no. on you, not from the picture. Oh, yeah, with it. Thank you. One day I'll remember. Uh, Week nine, you're sitting here. If she's at one end of the table, never would probably sit at the opposite end. Yeah, that's fair. I think you would have priority over anyone else. So. And I uh, also drag out Torres and Drunas. You would also have noticed that um, many of the other members, such as uh, Chad Bradwick and uh, Shilda Bear, and um, the sort of they they were waiting in the grand foyer um, whilst this went on. Um, less senior members, or just kind of more um, less involved with the the main negotiations as you guys are. And you would have heard as um, as the uh, as you were leaving the grand foyer, the Duchess Chad Bradwick being sort of like. Um, I do. I don't. Well, I want to come for fucking dinner too. And, and then just sort of like <laughs> slowly being drowned out as uh, Torres kind of gave him a, a pretty harsh look. <laughs> just quickly grab Jonas as well. Oh, Ostrid, look, it's wine sauce. And she passes it over. He he dips his finger into it and he's like, fine vintage. <laughs> 
um, the Duchess sits down and she raises a glass and so she says, uh, food first, uh, business later. And she winks, prompting you to all tuck into your food as it's now being all served up ahead of you. Is there much alcohol around? There's shit loads. There's like, there's a whole like different trays that are being wheeled in by the servants with highest, like the, some of the finest vintage wines you've <laughs> ever seen. Um, if you wanted it, they have ales, they have any, pretty much anything you'd want. I was trying to just grab two wine bottles and like a large stein and just dumps it next to his table and mm -hmm. he sort of stops looking at everyone and just starts tucking down like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Drunas it, actually joins in with you and just sort of is just kind of like looks around like really happy to have a, such a hearty meal once again um, and just digs in as well. Pitch would be looking to, to Weak Nigel to see if he's got any ideas about how to eat properly, like a cutlery and which cutlery to use first and all of that. He's eating it with a surprising amount of amazing table manners. <laughs> 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 Pitch would try and copy that as best as possible. And you would actually see the Duchess. She um, she just pushes her um, her knives and forks to the side, and she just uses her bare hands to pull a breast straight from the roast chicken, and begins to just sort of devour it, pulling meats off of it, um, almost like a hungry dog. Pitch now feels super unsure whether to eat properly or not. Nigel what was that? Um, I'll say Anya speak first and then Han Hannah can speak Anya. He called Sorry. you Anya then. Yeah. <laughs> what was yeah, that? Oh, sorry. Me? Me? Yeah, Me? you go or first, Anya. Anna. No, just going to say that Nigel, like, sort of half leans across the table and shouts at the bitch, Cutlery outside in! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nigel. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Duchess, I am... Um... I wouldn't want to offend your table, but you seem to be enjoying yourself freely. Should we do the same? And she's like, oh, of course. Everyone here is uh, my honoured guest. Nigel just face plants into the plate and starts <laughs> eating it. Like <laughs> yeah, Pitch laughs at that and then just tucks him with his fingers. You see Torres is just kind of like picking at her food, but not really eating a huge amount. What? Which Torres? This Torres. Oh, there's two Torreses, what the fuck? Devil's <laughs> <laughs> already finished whatever was on his plate, now he's just eating it from... <laughs> Yeah, you, you all get the impression the Duchess is not... And you, you would know this having met her before, that she's not... She puts on airs, but... Underneath, you get the impression she's not really a traditional noblewoman. Um, and um, anyone who would like to, feel free to roll a history check for me. To see if you'd know a little bit about the Duchess's history. Sure. Nope. <laughs> Wait, why is it not doing it? Why is the Beyond 20 not working? Oh, you might have to click on features and traits on... Uh, uh, what's his face is quite Ooh. Nigel's character sheet. Sometimes it does this weird update it needs to do. Yeah. Okay. It should work after that. <clears throat> Might have to refresh the page as well. Um, just give me one second. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Right, so uh, Helen with a 14, Pitch with a 90, Farrah, you definitely do not know. Um, <laughs> anyone else would do one? Um, Neville, you would definitely know this already. So. Oh, you got 20. Sorry, I missed that. Um, yeah, you each know this then. You know that um, the Duchess was the younger um, sister of... Um, the younger sister of Maldwin Daggerford. Um, you know that Maldwin was not a great duke. He was pretty... Just like to get drunk all the time, like, to have sex with lots of women um, that were not married to him. Hence... He, he, Hence Neville being there, like yes. Um, <laughs> Morn was not really an amiable person, but she had like a, a noble heart and a, a good heart. Um, and most people believe her to be a more capable leader than Maldwin. And um, and uh, before that, Morwen was more, she'd work with the town guard. Um, she would, um, she'd be more involved with that kind of thing. She would, she was really respected by the people. 
She usually trained with the militia and paid regular visits to the Shrine of Tempus, which is one of the shrines nearby. And she was the master of arms um, of, and sort of commanded the military of the castle whilst oh. um, Alduin was in charge. Um, so when he died, she was actually the, she's actually the first female and the first Duchess of Mount Daggerford ever. Wow. Um, so she kind of sort of took the position for herself after her brother died and, and nobody in town complained because she was really well loved. Yeah, he doesn't communicate any of that. It's just Ian. Yeah, so Pitch, you would know that as well, and Helen, you would also know that, and Neville, you would definitely know that. Yeah, Pitch is impressed by it, but as they've met before, I don't think he'd just be like, congratulations on the thing that happened a while ago. Yeah, it happened many years ago. But but so. he, he is impressed by that. Yep. Okay, so is there anything else anyone wants to say, or are you going to just tuck into your meals and finish up? Food. Sorry, I'm just doing that to test whether or not it was working. That's fine. Yep. Um, oh, um, sorry. Osric uncorks one of the bottles of wine with it, like a knife in his pocket, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just downs it. Nice. Do a um, do a Constitution save with, with advantage because you're Osric. So low DC. Yeah, easily. It doesn't even affect you. Uh, I think Pitch would look give Farrow a bit of a look at that. I mean, this typical Osdred, is it not? Hey, Osdred, recommend a bottle? Why not two? <laughs> <laughs> and he gets his other one, he rolls it down to um, Farrow, just like across the table. <laughs> and it kind of hits a few of your plates on the way, so it bounces off some of the <laughs> meats and veg. And Druinas kind of like looks at it, and Toros kind of just chuckles. Yeah, she's gonna pour herself a glass. Of pits, do you wanna, do you wanna try what he's trying? Uh, sure, yes, I wouldn't want to reject the lady's hospitality. And she just pours him a drink as well, and then she's. It takes a swig, but not like a giant air swig, like Ostred. Yeah. And if anyone turns back to Ostred at this point, he's just started on on the ale. <laughs> <laughs> Has he even touched the food? Uh, he pretty much inhaled the food, and now he's just going for the <laughs> liquid course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just let him have as much as he wants. We're not going to have all of this on the road. That's fair. And as you uh, do that, you see the Duchess is sort of starting to finish up, and then she sort of almost, it's weird, you almost just see her like resume this kind of more noble posture and I'm gonna take out this like, um, uh, like a handkerchief and just sort of like dab her mouth slightly, like a noble woman would. And um, she, um, da -da -da. and she, um, she looks at you, Neville. Um, and then sort of clears her throat like <clears throat> before turning to the rest of the group and she's like werewolves in the mist we've heard these dreaded words spoken again and again by farmers merchants and adventurers alike the hamlets um, east of Daggerford that Neville here she nods towards Neville has ownership of have fallen prey to a pack of a pack of them that spills out of the Misty forest on nights of the full moon, cloaked in a crawling mist that seems to follow them wherever they go. The beasts have spread death and mayhem and slaughtered adults and steal stolen children before retreating back into the woods. We have sent some of the town guard to try and combat the werewolf menace, but with little success. And uh, this is why I call upon the Iron Oath. We need you lot to sort out these bastards, yeah? Will will the group have already encountered werewolves at all? Probably not, no. Not directly. You would be somewhat familiar with well, do a if you wanna do a nature check to see how much how familiarity if you wanna do a group nature check for me. Yeah, okay. Well, it did it twice, but they're both bad. Great. 
Where is the wolf? <laughs> Why would you wear a wolf? <laughs> yeah, not not great roles. You you guys aren't really familiar with werewolves. Um, the most the person who would be most familiar is Ostred, who you grew up with tales of werewolves in your hometown, Ostred. Um, you know a little bit about them, but you not nothing specific. Just that they're cursed. Can I tell you what springs to mind when he thinks of them? Yeah. Well, he thinks that if they try and buy silver weapons and there aren't any in town, he's got an idea. And as you do, you, you announce that to the to the yeah. group, the Duchess. Like, so go on, yeah. And he's like, if they don't, we can buy all the silver coins, put them in a sock, and hit them with it. <laughs> I saw that meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the Duchess smiles at that and she says, um, we can all we can provide you with weapons that can be silvered by our renowned blacksmith, uh, Dervil Iron Eater. You surely have heard of him. And you definitely would have all heard of him. Probably the most famous blacksmith along the small coast. Um, if you visited Smithy in town in the morning, he is prepared to give you to silver some weapons for you. And furthermore, if you visit um, Helmick Howager at Hermick's um, Herbs and Oddments, he can provide you each with a scroll that may prove, prove useful in this mission. Yeah, is there any any more information about um, werewolves that you can give us? I mean, we're not particularly familiar. I believe Neville has more information. And she kind of looks to you, Neville. Um, Neville, you would know that... Um, you know all the information I just said, but you'd also know that um, they've been attacking one of your hamlets called Mistvale, vale, um, mm -hmm. and you were asked by the town's master to essentially deal with the situation. You know that they've some of their trackers have found tracks heading back into the Misty Forest, and if followed, they think that maybe there's some kind of den, um, but they don't really have the... Um, Capabilities there to deal with such a threat. It's a werewolf. <laughs> ah, get it. Get it. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we've got to try and sort out Miss Vale, because uh, <clears throat> it was doing perfectly well beforehand until these fairy bastards turned up, and. Uh, yeah, if you lot can get it sorted, then we can get things back to business, back how it was, and uh, make some more coin. I not want meat werewolf. Well, I mean, that's the mission. That's the mission, Nigel. Oh. Kill werewolves. Nigel, Me have right. choice. <clears throat> Go on, Tom. Uh Pitch is like frantically gesturing to Nigel. Pitch is like pointing at his own hair because Nigel's got a bit of like chicken just stuck in his wig <laughs> to the side. <laughs> Nigel, you, you. he's Nig like gesturing. Nigel, do a, yeah. do a perception, uh, do an insight check for me. Sorry, <laughs> you're joking, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, no, you you don't know. You have no idea what Pitch is pointing to, and you're like, what? Are you on about? <laughs> whoa, 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 pitch. Is there something behind me? No, Nigel. Uh, <clears throat> Dronas, could you... He just, he's still eating his, he's still eating the food tucking in. He kind of reaches over and just pulls, like, um, some the chicken, but he also managed to pull some of hair out of the wig at the same time and just sort of, <laughs> and just chucks it to the side. <laughs> Werewolf bait. <laughs> in any case this sounds like a mission that we we can do right Torres and she looks over yeah me and um, the Duchess have been contacting each other by letter so me and Drew and S know you know what's going on but we wanted to get everyone in here because um, the Duchess has a separate mission for myself Drew and S and the rest of the group so this is unfortunately just tasked to the six of you um, um, understood. And you kind of all, for a minute, you kind of go six, mm. and um, oh. and then the yeah. Duchess kind of pipes up and then says, uh, "Yes, uh, Neville wishes to uh, accompany you on this mission, I believe." Um, Despite my I prior mean... warnings of how dangerous it is likely to be. 
And she kind of stares oh, yeah. down at you, Neville, like eyes like a like a hawk. Is yeah. there a reason, Neville? Um, are you skilled in werewolf hunting? Well, you know, I've, I've kicked a few dogs in my time, so how uh, can it be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is one of my prime investments. I've got to, you know, make sure it gets sorted properly. And uh, if need be, you've got to do something right, do it yourself, you know? Farrah you... looks a bit worried. She's like, so you have no skills in werewolf hunting, I see. Uh, okay. Rosdred well, looks oh. at Neville, and yeah. he's like, what kind of armor do you wear? Uh, armor? Well, a man like me, I don't even need armor. <laughs> Farrah <laughs> face palms. <laughs> yeah, the expression on Pitcher's face is rapidly getting more despairing. And he uh, glances back to Farrah and he's like, uh, I suppose you've killed plenty of whales in your time then. Mm-hmm. Certainly not, but I've killed plenty of other things. Have you? Yeah, loads of things. Just yesterday, <laughs> there was this rat. Just crawling around <laughs> my bedroom. Clopped him with a shoe. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> she face palms again. <laughs> what, what is your um, preferred method of... Uh, uh, fighting Mr. Daggerson. Preferred? Well, whatever I can get my hands on. You know? Just get in there. Fwump. Done. Yeah. Fwump. Sounds like something you might do, Nigel. Has Ostrad got his bag with him, Lewis? Yeah, if you wanted to bring it in, you could have brought it in. No problems. So. Yeah. He just gets out his maul, smashes it on the table. Like, not smashes it on the table, but, like, yeah. doesn't. And he's like, can you pick this up? I, I could. I don't see any need to. I'm in the middle of my dinner, ain't I? Does your mall have the heavy <laughs> property here? Um, hang on. It does! <laughs> Good. Uh, Neville, what's your strength? Your strength score, not your modifier. Uh, 14. Yeah, you would actually be able to pick this up then. Mm. It's, no, it's, it's, still, li- it's still very heavy. But it's you. You can you can just about lift it if you wanted to. Farah no. looks over to the Duchess and she's like, "Well, I mean, if he dies, we take no responsibility for that." And as, as you say that, she's still like her eyes are locked on Neville. Who's got the highest passive insight? Oh, yeah, good. Uh, mine's thirteen. Okay. Not me then. Twelve. Twelve. To be fair, he has just been licking gravy off the tablecloth this whole yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch. Mine's 13 as well. Uh, 11. Um, you would notice this as well, Neville, but it's kind of it's more in the back of your mind, so it would be fair that notices this mostly. You get a just a you get a hint, Farah, that there's not a huge amount of love between Morwen and Neville, at least from Morwen's mm-hmm. side. Okay. I assume um, that that is understandable. She turns to you and she's like, uh, "It is Neville's wish to go with you, so he is a he is a grown boy. He can watch <laughs> after himself." Of course. Sort of raises his drink. Cheers, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> she kind uh, of oh, rolls oh, her oh, eyes drink. slightly. Sees an excuse to drink. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um. At this point, the the Duchess um, sort of stands to her feet, and she's um, she says, "I expect the mission on completion of the mission. Sorry, you can um, I can offer you two thousand gold pieces. Does this sound agreeable? Is that each or between us? It would be between <laughs> you. Damn Farrah it. looks at Torres. Is that what you had agreed upon? It is. It would just be between the." Uh, the five of you. Neville is, of course, uh-huh. uh, not going to take a, a share from the mission, but, you know. I don't know if that's... Oh, no. Hannah doesn't oh, yeah, know if that's reason. Enough for me. Oh, yeah. Austria looks over at Taurus, and he's like, where are you lot going, then? We, um... We have a private mission for the Duchess to complete. Taurus is to you. Which is? Confidential. Between you, have. What was that, Kieran? I didn't hear. Between the oath. 
Uh, indeed. She smiles. He he just gets up and uh, assuming knows where a toilet is. Yeah, you could uh, you could easily figure it out. Yeah, he picks up his maul. Mm-hmm. He does it quite dramatically. Yeah. And walks off. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. The Duchess um kind of looks over at this a bit un- perturbed and she's a bit kind of unsure and kind of you see her look at Taurus and Drew and kind of narrow her eyes a little bit, but then regain her form. Mm. I expect the mission to be to start first thing in the morning. Um Okay. I think we'll definitely need a a rest and we've had our food and yes, we have I to can... stock up. I can provide guest rooms for each of you um, that you may spend the evening in and um, feel free to make your way around the town. Um, like I said, uh, you can get your weapons silvered by Dervil at his smithy and also the scrolls from Helm- Helmick. Okay. I think, is that all? Is that... Indeed. Um, I wish you luck and... It has uh, been good to see some old faces again, and also some new ones. And kind of looks to weak Nigel. Hmm. Indeed, Nigel was just hope to see you again. again. She nods, and then she sort of takes her leave, and the a servant just sort of uh, comes out and guides you to each to a guest room. <clears throat> Is there anything you would do in the evening before the mission? Well, I was just going to say, <clears throat> while Sarah was being taken away, Neville would have. Sort of stayed behind until they're all gone. Yeah. Um, say to Morwen, um, <clears throat> quite a funny old band of misfits you've got. <clears throat> Indeed, but they are well known and well, um, very reliable. They've been proven to proven uh, themselves a great asset to this this town. Have you uh, seen them in action yourself? Um, somewhat. Not in combatness per se, but they have some curious ways of doing things. Their previous leader liked to had an idea to stop an assassination by dressing up as me. <laughs> Not the most successful one, but it was a, a curious idea. Well, if you've got faith in them, then as long as I know I haven't got to you know, look after any of them or nothing. <laughs> yes, quite. Um, I'm sure they won't need looking after Neville. <clears throat> he just tucks into his food. Okay, um, would want to do one thing that night. Yeah. He wants to go see Druinus. Yeah. Okay. So, so you'd be able to find his room and knock on his door, and he would open it, no problem. Um, Is this later in the well. evening? And he just says, Rosdred. Drunus. Come in. I mean, he, he comes in. Yeah. What is with this secret mission? I thought there were no secrets between our band. Agreed, but Torres has decided that this mission is to be kept private. I know little myself. Can you do an insight? You can indeed, yeah. I'll have him roll a deception check. 11, where are we? One second while I get his character sheet open. Have they done a secret mission before? Um, no. No. This is unusual. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, deception. Oh. Yeah, you. He's kind of. Jurnas is a hard to read person at normal times. Anyway, he's just like his dragonborn features just make him. He's just almost got no expression on his face, and he's just like, I apologize, Ostred. I know things have been unusual lately he looks up at Juranus he like sighs he's like 
Nothing's been the same since. Uh, I know. I know. And he looks down and he's like, I'm not sure how much longer I can stay. We would. I would. Miss you dearly. But I understand. And I, you, brother. There can be no secrets in a family, especially deadly ones. He kind of turns for a second and kind of. He like makes sure to no one's listening out, and he turns to you and he says, "Between, you know, kind of in a more a hush whisper." He's like, "Between you and me, brother, the oath is struggling." Uh, yeah, Osred gives him a look that he kind of knew that, and he's like. He nods, sort of solemnly. He nods back at you. Sleep well, and, brother. Yeah, he's like, good luck, friend. And he walks out. He nods, and he shuts the door behind you. Would anyone else like to do anything on the night before the mission? Um, no, I was just kind of took the thing I wanted to do. <laughs> But, um, um, no, all the shops are shut, aren't they? They would be at this point, yeah. Yeah. Never would take a lovely bath and practice his aim by throwing things at the rubber duck. <laughs> Love it. Make an attack roll. I want to see if you hit the rubber duck. Shit, what would that be with? Just do an unarmed attack roll, say. You actually hit it. <laughs> managed, yeah. to, managed to throw the soap at the duck, and it kind of and just sort of falls into the the little rubber duck falls into the water, kind of bobs up towards you in between your legs. Never feel confident. Okay. Anyone else? Pitch or weak Nigel or Talon? I think I think Pitch would knock on Farah's door. Okay. Um, yeah. Knock, knock, knock. Yeah. She opens it. Evening, Pitch. What, what are you doing here? Um, could we speak briefly? Sure. Come in. I won't keep you long. I just am concerned. We... Working as five of us does not concern me at all. We will do as we always do, but... This Mr. Daggerson, the fact that he refuses any kind of armor, does not know arms, I yeah. yes. cannot imagine. And if we lose him, uh, it must look poorly upon the oath itself. I agree. I mean, I don't know why the Duchess has allowed him to come. I mean, surely she has some authority over him, but... I mean, yeah, there's not much that can be done. I suppose he's just going to come. I I do worry about it. Um, maybe we can convince him to wear some armor at the very least. Yeah. I'll, I may have to assign somebody to just look after him during battle, I think. That's what I was thinking. Um, if, yes, if there is any way to keep him back or to avoid the worst danger, then that is probably worth our time. We will certainly keep him far back, as far away from any combat as possible. I'm not, I'm not sure what he will be like in combat. Perhaps he'll, perhaps he'll disregard his own safety. I mean, this, it could be an issue. However, it will, it will look poorly upon the the company, but it's not. I mean, I don't know what we can do about it. Honestly. Where do we... This is why I wanted to speak to you most. Where do we stand, Farah, with his safety versus safety of... It, it is not difficult to imagine if he was stuck or left behind. The rest of us retreated. Do we... Is our loyalty to him? Do we go back to rescue him at the risk of our own lives, the lives of us in the Oath? 
As always, Pitch, it is us. We are priority. Our group. Of course, if it is a possibility to help him out, of course we'll do that. But yes, I understand your concern. It's, but yeah, definitely prioritizing the group in that situation. I, times like this, I wonder what Kendall would have said. Yeah, me too. She kind of looks down. Never All right. Hair on the back of his neck suddenly stands up and he doesn't know. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will um, leave you to your rest. Good night. Good night, Pitch. I'll see you in the morning. See you in the morning. As you head out, Pitch, of the room, you see um, Chad Bradwick outside um, Torres's door, like banging on it really loudly. <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> I want to go on the mission! <laughs> and there's just no response, and he's just standing there, like, shouting. Chad! What? Chad, when has that ever worked in the past? You're not going to get Torres to open her door. Tenth time's the charm! Chad Bradwick's classic saying! <laughs> oh, damn it, boy! <laughs> Pitch. Pitch isn't going to intervene, but are there any guards in the corridor at all? They are, but they're kind of just like they're just kind of like rolling their eyes and kind of standing okay, there, just like that... almost like the guards outside Buckingham Palace kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Pitch would give them a an empathetic look and then head back to his room. You would see as you're heading away, like Shielder Bear comes out and she's like, uh, "Come on, Chad, you're the go out. Let's go, let's go." And kind of like directs him, and he give it after a few seconds. He kind of just sort of sighs and looks down at the floor, and he's like, "Just wanted to go on the mission." Oh, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you all head off to sleep? Week nine, yeah. your Helen. Is there anything you would do before you went to bed? No, <laughs> Nigel would just curl up with his teddy. Oh, oh, does he okay. does, does he have a name for his teddy? Um, Mr. Snufflax. Love it. <laughs> that is going in the, the notes for. Let me just quickly put that in. <laughs> I'm not forgetting that. I'm going to put it in Nigel's notebook for you. And yes, uh. he does take him into battle wearing a tiny suit of armor. Nigel's teddy. Oh! <laughs> okay. right, Was it Mr. Mr. Snufflax? Now we know he takes priority. <laughs> yeah, we have to get him over the final line of the campaign now. <laughs> right, so you all head off to sleep. Um, a long day of travel and a nice hearty dinner before a for a mission. A mission of this Danny you haven't taken in quite a while. You've done smaller missions, but a mission for the Duchess um, is another big mission and 2,000 gold between the five of you. While the mud doesn't sound like a lot at the moment, it would very much benefit the oath. Um, mm. So you each curl up in your beds. Uh, nice to be in a warm, soft bed with handmade linens. Like just, It's a beautiful um, sleeping experience. Um, and each of you slowly nestles in and drifts off to sleep. And before long, you awake, and it's the morning. Mm. Well, she... I'll just say that um, Osdred has used his that feat, Blessings of the Forge. Mm -hmm. mm. Plus one AC on his armor. Okay, That's awesome. Nice. Um, you each go for breakfast you're all brought back breakfast in bed by the servants um yeah. you can have whatever you'd like eggs bacon nice. they've got lots of things any meats vegetables any anything basic they've got on hand um porridges anything loads um cool. so you each treat it to a very tasty breakfast and before long you will find yourself gathering in the castle courtyard as you as farah you would probably be the first to go around and collect everyone um, yeah. followed shortly by Neville probably as well and at this point I'll drag you back to the Daggerford Matt it's, um, she wants to say 
Uh, I mean, if Torres and Drunas are going to be there as well, she wants to say goodbye to everyone. Yeah, they would. They would. Every everyone would be gathered in the courtyard, including all the members yeah. of the oath. So, she's going to talk to Torres and Drunas. So it looks like it's going to be a while before we see you again. Drunas kind of looks down. He's like, "Indeed, sister." And um, then is Torres is like, you'll I've have it done in no time. <laughs> it's good this coin. This is the first time, Mother, I don't know where you're going. We'll be fine, love. Don't you worry. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, is everyone uh, prepared? Have you got all your supplies and everything? Well, we may need to go to the shops first, the smithy as well, to silver our weapons, but other than that... That's quite all right. I've got to grab a couple of things myself, so uh, take your time. Don't want to go in unprepared or nothing. No, it's wise like, to so stock up I... first. Are you going to grab a weapon, Mr. Daggerson? I assume it what? will be a dagger. Son, I've got two weapons on me already. Oh. I... Oh, God. Let's see them then. <laughs> he brandishes his fist. Oh, my God. <laughs> fucking A, Pitches fucking B. <laughs> Pitch is a polite man, but even he like can't help but like have a little smirk on his face. Uh, I see. Well, um, I look forward to seeing how you plan to silver them. <laughs> Fair shudders for the future. Uh, Ostrad looks over at Pitch. He's like, surely he could wear silver rings. Oh, um, yes, Ooh. that would, um, that would make sense, Alfred. Thank you. How about some knuckle dusters? You have any of those, Neville? Um, I can totally imagine Neville already being one to be wearing jewellery, and it wouldn't just be silver. It's yeah. probably, like, gold. <laughs> oh, I want to wear silver. I've got plenty of gold on me. <laughs> Werewolves. Yeah. I'm looking forward to when Neville tries to punch a werewolf in the face with a gold <laughs> ring on. Which might have been like that bit in uh, Ace Ventura where he leaves the ring print on his forehead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. So maybe we should stock up? Uh, I will go to the blacksmith. Okay. Okay. Where are people going? So if Oscar is going to the blacksmith, is he gonna? Oof. Is he gonna no, take everyone's do. weapons? Um, I assume so. He can do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we all need all our stuff silvered. Yeah, he'll be going to do that. So he's going around taking people's weapons off them, inspecting yep. them as he does so. <laughs> <laughs> does he notice anything about any of them, DM? Do an investigation check. Seeing as he's a smith and he's got smith's tools, mm -hmm. will it be investigation? Oh, good point. Yeah, do a... Um... Ooh, what would check would that be? It would be an intelligence check with your proficiency modifier. It's a plus three. A five! <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Even with that low roll, I think you would be able to see that these are decently crafted weapons there they're not anything particularly special um would if any of you think that any of your particular weapons might have personal engravings on them or anything then feel free to say um, but otherwise i would assume they're pretty mundane weapons pictures wouldn't be engraved but it'd be well kept ever yep. since when he first got inducted and torres was like where's your sword loser um he's like made a point of keeping his sword sharp and well well kept, it's a rapier. Yeah, that's totally yeah. fair. Do any of them look ruddy? Would any of yours look ruddy, everyone? What does ruddy mean? No. Like, scuffed up. Oh, my great club probably would be. <laughs> great club, though. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that silver is going to be fun. So he basically just fine. accidentally drags it along the ground behind him, so... <laughs> No, Fair Scimitar is probably engraved with the logo, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, my short sword is engraved with my uh, my martial arts school sort of symbol. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Yeah, Fred looks at it. It's like, hmm. Let me start. Is anyone coming with me? Uh, uh, Nigel will help him carry everything because he's huge. Uh, yeah, I was straight looked at Nigel and he's like, thank you. We should stock up with food and um, perhaps some tools. If anybody wants to get those. Where is he heading, Liz? Um, you would be heading to Dervil Smithy, which you would definitely know is here. 34. Yeah. 34. 34. Is anyone else heading anywhere? Neville, perhaps Meek you Nigel's should get some going armor. with um, things, so... <clears throat> Don't you worry, love. I know what I'm getting. What are, what are you getting? Well, you know, bits and bobs. You have to keep me going, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to collect the scrolls from Hermit. Oh, yes. Do you want to do that, um, Pitch? Sure. I'll get some food for us. Sounds good. Get some rations, perhaps. So... What's the plan, Helen? You want to come with me, with Farrow, or do your own thing? I'll come with, the. Uh, make sure you get the right sort of rations. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, cool, cool. so... I know this own brand bullshit. Pitch, you would be heading <laughs> to... Uh, let me just find it on the fucking thing. Uh, Number... I, say, like, I don't know if you wanted to, because I know we're not going to be here long, but if you wanted yep. to either label the buildings or create like a key I, the numbers. I can do that for you, and I can reveal it for I'll you now. A legend. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, no! So Helmix Erdnomans is would be um, number 40, so this is over here. Oh, so many. It's a busy town. Forty is here. That is where pictures. With Hang regards, on, so where, where do we get food from then? You could get them from any of the taverns, or you could get from Miller's Dried Goods. Let's do that. Miller's Dried Goods. But yeah. What about you, Neville? Where are you heading? Trade of the tools sounds interesting. What sort of things were they have? You would know that. Which number is that? Trade of the tools. 20, 39. 39. Bear me one second. I'm basically Ooh. looking for like a general store. Yeah, Miller's uh, dry goods might have some stuff like more general food stuff. Uh, 39, did you say it was? Yeah, trade of the tools. 39. You'd know that. Um, it's run by an eccentric old man named um, Old Ander. Um, very old man. He, he mostly sells t old tools and furniture that he's refurbished. He's a well-loved local of Daggerford. Okay. Where would be a place to go for? Um, Let me just have a quick look. At... Kind of general equipment. General equipment you would probably best find... Uh... Just having a look on the old thing. Sorry, I've got a million notes here. <clears throat> You're probably your best bet is probably um, uh, either uh, Miller's Dry Goods or um, apart from that, probably. The otters, uh, the otters run, you know, sells a lot of sides, and the goblins' claw, cloth and cordage also sells different stuff. Okay. Whereabouts are you heading? Um, let's start with the dry goods. Yeah, so heading into Miller's dry goods. Let me just get that thing up. Um, you see a sort of quite a, a large woman, um, all three of you heading in, um, sort of wearing kind of like a, almost like a white 
um, kind of dress, but with like a black big belt and kind of uh, more like almost like a what's the outfit like um got the Amish people wear. <laughs> I can't remember the name. Oh, of it. Yeah. Um, she um she's looking around. There's there's plenty of things in the shop. There's um all kind of things you'd expect. Um, sort of venturing gear to have things. There's lots of there's also lots of grain and flour and various goods for the home, that kind of thing. Um, Farrah's gonna pick out all the stuff that will last. Yeah, but you can get. I'll say you can get as many rations as you want to buy here. So yeah, it's just gonna get like how long did the mission was gonna be? I can't remember. Um, it's not too far away. So. No, you'd know that it takes about a day to get to Mist Vale. Um, okay. I think Neville would have said that. So she's going to get like five days worth, just in case, anyway. Yep, that's totally fair. Um, so five days worth of yeah. rations would cost you um, five silver pieces each, so um, five days would be two gold and five silver. Yep, okay. Neville? I can say so ten silver is one gold. 10 rations is worth one gold, so yeah, never would get 10 rations. Yeah. Just flick a, a single gold piece over. But I thank you kindly, love. Did we get rations for everyone? Just... Yeah, I'll say for the sake of brevity, this is more just a part of the session where you can stock up on stuff. Um, and if anyone yeah. wants to play out, role play out the scenes, and feel free to. But you can use your okay. what gold you have to stock up on stuff. So, feel free yeah. to um, look Farrah at the. Got, Farrah got rations for everyone, by the way. That's fine. Yeah. And feel free to look. Um, and let me just see if I've got an adventuring gear thing I can share with you. Do I have the actual table? Yeah, I do. Um, I'll put it in all your journals. You should have one um, under alternative rewards or supplement material. Yeah, I got it. If you scroll down on that, you will eventually get to a table how much things are worth. Oh, cool. Okay. Feel free to... Uh, should be under a tab called supplemental, supplemental so material. So can I just type to you what I want then, out of those? You, if you just want to do it yourself and add it to your thing, and as long as you're taking the cost away, that's absolutely fine. You don't okay. have to tell me. I don't me. have much gold, though. <clears throat> You can use what gold you okay, got. Okay, here we go. Okay, I've only got ten. Yeah, you can use what gold you got. Okay, wait, give me a minute. I'm going to make a shopping list. Whilst you're doing that, and if anyone wants to do that, just like I said, feel free. We'll cut over to Pitch. Um, at... Pitch at Helmet Camps at Opposites. Um... Inside, you, you go into this uh, shop, which appears to be like a spice and herb shop. Um, it's got it's got plenty of different potions kind of lying around with different things in um, quite, a, quite an odd place. Um, Oddments kind of fits the name quite well because it's got um, all these different sort of um, vials full of different plant matter, different kind of like liquids and potions, all kind of strange things in there. Um, many things that you think based off your basic knowledge of arcane stuff that you think that many magicians might find useful material components here. Hmm. Um, you see a uh, a thin half-elf man with blonde hair at the, the back of the store who kind of just uh, waves to him. He's like, hello and welcome to Helmix Herbs and Oddaments. How may I help Good you? morning. Um, I was told by the Duchess that we of the Iron Oath could pick up some scrolls here. Of course, you're of the Iron Oath. You haven't been here in a, a number of years. Uh, yes, just over two now. Oh, it's fantastic to have uh, celebrities back in our little town, apart from Sir Istival, of course. Oh, of course. We couldn't um, hold a candle to Sir Istival. Um, yes, uh, the scrolls, of course. Um, she's all paid for them already, and she gets out. Um, she said you needed six scrolls, I believe. Uh, six is correct. Yes. Yes, indeed. And he kind of like puts them in this kind of um, nicely concealed like package for you. And mm -hmm. he's like, um, "Did she tell you what they consisted of?" Or uh, not at all. Just the word "scroll" was used. 
Ah, right, of course, uh, leaving everything to old Helmick. Um, the scrolls um, mentioned um, are spell scrolls of remove curse. I see. I, I don't know, but I assume you're on some kind of mission dealing with some devilish creatures. I, yes, that would be fair to say. Um, I don't know much about them myself. Have you heard of uh, werewolves? Um, werewolves, yes, they've, the reports of some attacking the hamlets nearby of here. Um, I don't know too much about them myself. They're horrible creatures, I imagine. I would imagine so, yes. I've um, heard that silver is what you need to use against those. We've been informed of the same, though I appreciate your your offering of knowledge. Um, is there any... Uh, it is a fine establishment you have here. Do you offer magical items of any well, kind? I am... Um have a number of different herbs and um, potions that might be of use. <laughs> Pitch sort of feels his coin purse, which is pretty lackluster right now. Yeah, you don't have a lot of money. I shall keep that in mind. Thank you, sir. You've been of great use. The Iron Oath thanks you. No problem. And if you ever want to come to Helmix again, um, we've got plenty of things on that would be very useful to a celebrity such as yourself. <sighs> of course. And he kind of does a Pitch. little bow to you. Yeah, Pitch gives him a, a fairly deep nod and then heads back out. Okay. In that case, we'll cut over to um, we, Nigel, and um, Ostred. You head into a... Um, let me just quickly get on my notes. Do, 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 do. Before head... I go, oh, um, Ostred would be like, Nigel, don't touch anything. <laughs> but it's so... Nice, pretty colours. <laughs> I know, but you can touch when we come out. Your your club will have silver on. As you walking up to the smithy, Ostred, you see a um, a sign that sort of swings in the wind in the shape of an anvil. You would notice with your smithing talents that this has clearly been smithed by an a, an artist of a blacksmith. Um, it's been it's been sort of forged out of iron and it's 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 perfect it's some of the best work you've seen for this kind of thing maybe ever okay he does a very slight nod up at the sign okay do you head on in yeah and he, he gives <laughs> he gives Nigel like a sort of not mean but just like you know, don't remember what I said, don't touch, sort of look. <laughs> and Nigel gives him a look like like a sulky baby. <laughs> Inside you you find the floor is a a hard cobblestone um, with a large um, forge at the back um, with a, a you could before you went in you could see a massive ch uh, chimney um, coming out and uh, you see there's not it doesn't really look like a normal shop but there is a number of weapons that are hanging up um sort of the front on some hooks and stuff like that um there's a large half orcish guard standing nearby and um you see a a dwarf uh, working the forge at the back with a pair of um like goggles on his head um hard at work his features blackened with the uh, blackened with the heat of the of the forge what sort of dwarf is he? Is he a mountain dwarf or a hill dwarf? Do a perception check. With advantage, because you're a dwarf yourself. Okay. Holy fuck. Not great rolls. Um, with, the, with the eight, though, I think you could tell that he was probably a mountain dwarf. Okay. Is there a bell? Um, yeah, as you push in, the bell goes, and uh, after a few moments, he he just keeps smithing for a few moments, and after it gets about a minute, and you're kind of like, this is awkward, and then after a minute, he kind of gets up and moves his uh, goggles up, and he's like, nods to you, and he's like, can I help? Yes, we're from the Iron Oath. All right. Um, we're here to have our weapons smithed and silvered. Of course. 
Um, place the ones down. I can. Uh, I've been told to smith up to six weapons for free for you. Nigel just drops the whole pile onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, kind of looks down at the great club and he's like, "Can't silver a great club, man." Can't you put some bands on it? He kind of sighs and he's like, a man of my talents doing fucking bands on a great club. What are the world coming to? Fine. And he uh, takes them one after the other and uh, kind of just doesn't even speak to you but starts just getting to work pretty quickly. Um, he'd take probably about an hour to do it, do each to six of them. Um, but he, he silvers each each one of you. Um the silvered weapons have 20 ammunition. So if you want to put um, into as a custom item into your inventory, just put 20 pieces of silver ammunition. Um, every time you make an attack, it degrades the silvering. So... Uh, is everyone doing that? Everyone can do that, yeah. Sorry, what, what do 20? we you have to, Yeah, each weapon has essentially 20 pieces of silver ammunition, I'm calling it. Um... So each time you make an attack with that, you must make sure you minus it, because um, they it degrades as it, with each attack essentially. <clears throat> what? Sorry, how do we do that? If you add a custom item onto D and D Beyond, so if you go to your equipment oh, yeah. and then um, click on Manage Equipment and then Custom Items, and it should say Add Custom Item, and once then you open that little tab, and then once you've done that, um, once you've got the item in your thing, you should be able to just add 20 of them. Um, so once you've got the item in your inventory, click on it and then you, it will say quantity and then you can just put up to 20. And then every time you use it, you can just minus it in the same way. No, I've put silver ammunition brackets rapier and yep. 20 of them. Is there anything else you'd like to do in the roster of a week, Nigel? Um, would there be weapons on display to buy? There would be, yeah. Um, Nigel might well look over them. What what would there be there? Let me quickly have a look for me. Do, do, do. Uh, bear with me one second. Yeah. Sorry, it's took me. Um, there would be a number of things. There would be um, long swords. There would be hand axes. There would be daggers. There would be great axes, great swords. There's all sorts of things. Would any of them be silver? Um, not from what you can tell. Do a do a investigation check for me. Yeah, you you have no idea. Looking around, you can see that they look steelish in colour, but so you don't think so, but you're not hundred percent sure. Okay. Um tempted to buy a dagger. Okay, you would um if you brought the dagger up to Dervil, he would tell you it's two gold pieces. Okay. Okay. And he reaches into his pocket and sort of like smacks it down on the on the thing. Yeah, and he just takes it. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? Not for me. Neville. <laughs> Ostrid. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he definitely Sorry. called him Neville. No, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <I'm... laughs> right, turns around. It's like, looks at your dagger. Nice dagger. And... Just stares out of a window, seemingly at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if everyone's finished shopping, uh, it's not quite. No. So we'll cut yep. back to you, never. Using, if you want. using his uh, charm and yep. charisma, and definitely his connection <laughs> to the Dagovid. Yeah. Um, can he try and persuade the shopkeep to? 
I've got a whole list, so essentially sell him 280 <laughs> worth of gold for 160. Do a persuasion check for me, and I'll say with advantage because you're posi if you're reminding her of your position, then oh yeah, Good plan, <laughs> definitely. Sure. Yeah, with with ease. Um, as soon as you bring up the fact that you're related to the the Duchess, and um, you see the face of the sort of large portly woman, just kind of go, oh, uh, of course. Um, uh, uh, we would offer I could offer a discount to someone of your stature. What? Thank you very much, love. You know you know you've always been my favourite, you have. Uh, oh, we appreciate it. And he just drops the pouch of hundred and sixty. And she'll take it. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Ferris got like set. three silver left. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, no. Uh, Pitch is good to go. Good. He wants a crossbow, okay. but he can't afford it. I'm going to quickly go for a pee then, so if everyone wants a pee break, feel free to. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Before we get on with the mission. I think we're going to kill the werewolves and we're going to come back and it'll be okay. We'll go to the... Wait, I've got it. Wait, I've got it. We'll go to the Lady Luck Tavern and wait for this all to blow over. Yeah. <laughs> I hate how much I like Neville. God damn it. Fuck you, Stefan. Mm. Hey, I was ready to hate he's... Neville. The he's question is, teddy. would you like, like him? him as much if it wasn't if it wasn't Stefan's character? Because no. I suspect not. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's all about Neville, you know. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> Good old Nevy boy. I'll say I'm still not happy with his voice, but whatever. I like it. Although, of course, Mr. Snufflex takes the takes the <laughs> crown. Mr. Snufflex. I don't care. Neville's definitely going into combat with him, like tucked in his breastplate, like you know when <laughs> people have. Um, Davies on their front. Like, <laughs> in his front. What happened to me is hit? Is that when Nigel rages? <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. You hit Mr. Snufflex! Yeah, come on, Die! Strong's like, you can all go, but Mr. Snufflex is dead. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll all be like, we're not going anywhere. Right, I am. Um... Looking like, um, you know when people put like teddies on the front of their lorries? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just covered like, in shit. Yeah, shadow of the former film. <laughs> Mr. Snufflex has seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Start off as a normal teddy now, just looks haunted. <laughs> I'll bear it back. No Mr. Worries. Snufflex has the haunted one background. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I bought a ladder and I, I didn't realise it was £25 and now I'm like <laughs> 0 0.5 pounds just under carrying capacity. So Farrah came out of the shop with a fucking <laughs> ladder over her shoulder. Yep. <laughs> you can return it if you if that's something you didn't want to spend that much money on, I will say that much. Well, it was only one gold, but yeah, actually fair. no, it wasn't even that. It was like one silver piece or something. Two silver pieces. <laughs> The question is, what would you need a ladder for? Well, in case you can't get up something. <laughs> That's what it's well made. Live in tree houses. That's what Nigel's for. He's your human ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true, true. Love it. Yeah, you know what? Let's get rid of it, because I don't even want it. I think we're just waiting for Stefan. It was just amusing imagining yeah. it sticking out of Farrah's backpack. <laughs> keeps knocking into tree branches above and everything. Oh yeah. Oh my backup. Now I've got four right. silver pieces. Nice. Ostro dies. Not gonna feel too bad because the guy with a whip is just gonna be like. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> da -da -da -da. No, no, it's gonna be like a real downer. But he's just gonna be like whipping himself all the time. <laughs> Love it. Does anybody else ever worry about Kieran? Uh, I'm used to it by now. 
you think I'd be used to it, but I'm still always amazed. You haven't raised enough water to eat yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some of the stuff I've got planned in that. Oh no. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. The question is, how soon will Davey wake up? <laughs> well, he should wake up. Tomorrow. I think we. I think we. At the end of the session, he woke up, didn't he? Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Because it reminded him of an ovum. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said, I feel fucked as oh, that yeah. woman down in Leylon or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we realised after it should have been up in Leylon. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> but that's a daily right. thing to do. <laughs> and he was concussed. Does this mean I have to concuss myself before tomorrow's session? Just no, he, he can become concussed. Okay. Method acting. Tom, I like to devote myself to my part, okay? I love it. Yeah. Steph, are you back? Yeah, yeah. Oh, back. you're back. Awesome. All right, well, she will resume then. Um, so, let me just quickly get my notes up. Right, so, you each gather at the edge of town on the southern gate and the rest of the iron oath is waiting for you um including Childa bear and um chad bradwick pimkin selfie photo grundle west of course stillbury featherston amaranth crane and of course torres and druiness and um they've come to sort of wish you farewell they've prepared the wagons for you um so you've got a you've yeah. got two wagons amongst you Pharaoh's going to step up to Torres. So, I guess we'll see you in a while. How long is your mission? I can't say for certain, but I imagine uh, imagine we'll be reunited in a week or so. Is there is there a reason for the secrecy? Can't say, love. You can't say. She looks kind of annoyed at that response. Oh, dress mate, sir. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she just, I thought just... we were a group all in it together. Hard times call for hard measures. Yeah, she's she's a bit pissed off now. Understand. Okay, well, I'll see. You. Just quickly. She says something. goodbye to everyone else as well. Uh, bear with me one second, Kieran. How on that? Um, you know, on the fantasy calendar thing, how do you change the current day? Uh, you, I think. It's just to write, and you change it on the dial that's there. It will say like next day or something. I can't remember very well. Uh, no, that's not that. Uh, there are two views. One of them's your view, and one of them's like. Hang on, I'll go look myself. I cannot remember how to do it. Go to views. Yeah. It? Go to fancy calendar. You go home. You go to your calendar. Yeah. To edit. Go to edit. And and then you see the dial on the left. Uh, dial on the left. It's like, it's got a clock and then it's got like the calendar and it should say the name of the calendar, the link. Uh, I do not see that, no. Time, hours. You're on the wrong one then. You need to go home. Home. And yeah. then it'll say your calendar. And there should be a pen. Oh, edit. pen, yeah. Oh, and um, do I have to enable clock? There we go, enable clock and I've got a thing now. Oh, right, there you go. And then there's current day, and you just press the plus button. What is current day? There we go. Awesome. Thank you, Kieran. Appreciate that. Trying to keep track of the calendar. Right, so, um, yeah, you each gather at the edge of town, like I said. Um, this pretty tense moment um, between the Torres and the rest of you being very cagey. Um, not sure what to make of it. But... Yeah. Yeah, Pitch has his arms crossed. Yeah. Farrah's not really pissed off. Um, Ostred <laughs> looks and he's like, my day, Oves meant. Hmm. You would all notice that Druinas is looking down quite solemnly. Yeah. And um, Torres kind of just like rolls her eyes. He's like, such a downer, you lot! And just kind of walks off and just kind of throws her hands in a way. 
and uh, Drew and Ass walks up in between Ostred and Pitch and places a hand on each with you far ahead and he's like I wish you well my family look after yourself Drew and Ass. he just nods and walks away be strong brother and uh Stay safe. the rest of Amarant Crane just kind of leaning on the side is just kind of like um, he's just got an apple in his hand and he's just kind of chewing it and just sort of staring and just sort of smiles and just gives a little wave. Uh, Dilby Featherston just sort of walks up and he's like, Good luck, gentlemen. We'll all have a... We'll be back in together in a week, I'm sure. I'm so glad he's not coming with us. <laughs> <laughs> and Pimkin's like, Yeah, we'll all be back together soon enough. And um, uh, I'll miss you all. <laughs> selfie photo kind of leans over and she's like, um, Let me just capture the moment quickly. And she's just kind of, she's like <laughs> sketching, like furiously trying to, and she's like, ta-da! And trying to show you this little sketch of you all kind of standing there, kind of like looking weird and a uh, bit tense <laughs> in the picture with like Torres kind of like with her hands in the air, kind of like moving off. Perfectly captured as always. Shield the Bear kind of leans in to you, Pitch, and she's like, good luck, Sorathos. Thank you, Shilda. Keep an eye on them all for me. She just nods. And then uh, Grundle West kind of leans over to you, Helen, and it's like, uh... Helen, no! Uh, it's, going, it's going to be... I hope you do well on the mission. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. I haven't seen that complex. I got, um... I got a present for you. <laughs> yes? And he hands over a, um... a nice piece of cutlery. It's like... Cutlery? Yeah. For you to eat on your mission. <laughs> Not in the cutlery, yeah. to eat with. Yeah, I, I, that's really thoughtful of you. Thank you so much. I, uh... He kind of smiles. He's like, yeah, I did it. And then uh, <laughs> and then he walks back over to Chad Bradwick. He kind of like, sort of like punches him on the shoulder, like jokingly, like, yeah, you did it. Hmm. <laughs> Nigel's just hugging everybody, even if they don't want to be hugged. Bye-bye! 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 Most of them hug you, maybe apart from, um... Maybe apart from Amarant Crane, who's just gonna... He's like, uh, I'm not one for hugging, dear. But good luck. Nigel just crushes him in a hug anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Make an athletics check, fuck it. I'll have him roll a... Oh, it's a plus six. Good luck. Ooh. No, we'll have him roll. Hey, uh, acrobatics check. Yeah, no, he does not. He cannot resist your your strength. You pick him up, and he's kind of like his eyes kind of bulge out, and the rest of you see him like <laughs> not used to seeing Amaranth uh, in this sort of way, as he's kind of usually pretty uh, suave and on the side and caught him off him over for a bit. But then he kind of he relaxes a bit after a second. He kind of pats you on the back, uh, Nigel, and he's like, "Good luck, Nigel. We'll see. We'll see each other soon." <laughs> Bye bye. Yeah, and you all, are you all gonna head off? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Farrah's, is it, are we on a wagon? You have two wagons between you. Uh, Farrah's gonna get on the wagon. She's gonna pet the horses first. Yep. Yeah, we'll so she's just gonna get on. on. First one and the first. Okay. Farrah will drive the first one. Who's gonna drive Pitch. the second? Pitch, Pitch will drive the second one. Okay, and you can each take up whichever wagon you'd like to. Now, I imagine Neville would go in the forward one. Yeah, I just said, yeah, the one at the front. One at the front, sorry, didn't he? And, um, yeah, you can all space yourself out however you'd like. Um, have we moved three? You have not, and I'm about to, though. Oh, okay. Um, all right, let's... About to well. Move you to a new Switch. screen. Oh. Give me one second to set up the... For the stream. Are they going north? Are they going to meet Davy Millstone? No, you're not going north, unfortunately. <laughs> if only. I think this might be the year before that as well. It is, sure. it is the year before that, I think. 1491. Um, I'd love to see how uh, weak Nigel and Davy Millstone would get on. <laughs> God, yeah, that, that is a, a group for the ages. Give me one second, I'll get as Davy Millstone tries to bed weak Nigel. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus okay. Christ. Jesus one. Sorry. Use this wagon token for now. You'll see that. 
Let's quickly turn the mm -hmm. music up a bit. Cool. Right, so a light drizzle starts as you head your way out of Daggerford on the mission. Um, a mission that is an interesting one for most of you as you feel you get this sort of weird tinge in the back of your mind that some of you just feel maybe this is maybe maybe this is the one maybe this is the last one who knows but you know you get this odd feeling mm. as you head towards the misty forest so um each of you are you just traveling straight down the tradeway yeah i think so oh uh, yeah whichever direction the, the mission was most direct route yeah it's the most direct route so it's about 10 o'clock Oh, it's probably a bit later than that now. Actually, it's probably about midday. Um, can I? Sorry, can I say I gave out the um, the scrolls? Yes, of course. So if you'd all, if you haven't already, if you'd like to add a scroll of uh, remove curse, should 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 be. If it's not in the items, then just feel free to, free to add as a custom item. When you say everyone, he yeah. would, he would give it to Neville. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's still referring to you as Mr. Daggerson. Well, also, because Neville didn't have a weapon, I'm also wondering, Nigel, would you have silvered that dagger? Probably. Okay. I'll allow you to add another set of silver ammunition to your to your to that dagger if you'd want as well then. So, as each of you head down, uh, each Space about five miles, so each one takes you about an hour. Uh, yeah, about an hour to get through. So one o'clock, two o'clock, we'll say. And uh, as you're traveling down the beaten track of the tradeway, you notice it's unusually quiet. Uh, on a more lively day, you might find traveling merchants, trade caravans, and questing adventurers sauntering along this path. But today, however, the air remains still and there is little sound beyond the turning of the wheels as your wagon chugs slowly forward. If, if you'd like this time to talk to each other about the mission ahead or anything like that, then feel free to. Who's in my wagon? Probably I'm me. in the front one. So Farrah, the... Neville, and I'll say Ozdred, if that's okay with you, Kieran? Yeah, sure. Are in the front wagon, and we'll say... Um, Weak Nigel, uh, Helen, and Pitch are in the back wagon. Oh, yeah, the party bus at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel kind of follows Pitch around like a, like he's he's his best friend kind of thing. He he follows his lead. Like Thud Rock yeah. Castle would follow. Uh, oh, I can't remember his fucking name yeah. now. What did he, what name did he use? John Wilcox, that's it. Yeah, John Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, so how long have you all known A various amount of time. I think I've known everyone here the longest. Long enough. And uh, <clears throat> you all, you know, up to snuff. Are you happy with everyone you got involved? Not really. Mm. Some tense moments. Uh, why, is, why is it? Is there anyone I should be keeping an eye on? Uh, don't worry about it for now, Neville. Well, I wouldn't want anybody to uh, compromise the mission, you know? I've got a good well, investment here. Uh, I think you might be the main one in that regard, Neville. Do you know how to use that dagger? He hasn't got a dagger. Oh, I thought he did have a dagger. Nope, he said fucking A and fucking B. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fist. Ostrad looks over to uh, Neville, and he's like, "Why did you want to come?" Well, I've already said I wanted to see this through and make sure it gets done right. This is a you know very important investment for me. I wouldn't want to see anything go wrong with it. So you're here for a, an amulet? Is that what the mission? Yeah. How would you deal with a werewolf, Mister Daggerson? Mm -hmm. How does anyone deal with one? Um, oh, I thought you were going to say punch it on the nose like a shark. 
Osgrid just has his maul in his lap and he just like pets it. I'm sure you have your means too, and I'll have my own. I look forward to seeing it. Mm, I am curious as well. If you want to cut back to the back wagon. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, Pitchwood's cool back. So, um, Helen, did they teach you about werewolves or other strange creatures back at your place you trained? Not too much. Yeah, werewolves, especially, I've not heard too much about. Do you know anything interesting about werewolves? I presume they're pretty fierce. I would assume so myself. I, there's some verse of a song long forgotten. I can't recall it, but... Well, I let's just say I'm happy I'm in the wagon with the two strongest fighters in the group. Never a bad place to be. Which of you two is stronger, do you think? Arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna do it? Uh, In a rocky a wagon. <laughs> I guess I would. Yeah. Okay. Me. If you'd like to both make uh, strength checks for me in the back of the wagon as you try and lean it on the side of the seat, both sort of kneeling down. Picture kind of looking back, kind of smiling. <laughs> Ooh, saw that 20. Ooh. Eight. No. <laughs> George's arm wrestling streak uh, continues. Um, so Nigel has the advantage as he starts pushing you down if you'd like to roll another one. Oh, another strength step. Yeah. I won't Sorry. take the second one because it was rolled twice. I didn't mean to. That's fine. Ooh. Ooh, same. Ooh, and it yeah. evens out as uh, Helen manages to push back slightly. Again, another set of strength hacks, please. Yeah, pitch, is, pitch, when he saw Nigel take the lead, he was like, yeah, that's what I thought. But then Helen fights back. Ooh, and Nigel once again starts pushing back. Oh. One more strength, <laughs> strength check, please. Pitch is struggling to watch the road. And with that, <laughs> Nigel... <laughs> Just slams Helen's down, hand down into the into the seat of the wagon. And he puts his hands in the air. Oh, yeah, champion! <laughs> well done, Nigel. I I think maybe Helen's skills lie elsewhere than brute force. Well, quite right. There's a lot more to it than that. Well, I'm not going to take that as an insult. <laughs> so... After another two hours of travelling, a total of one, two, three, four, five hours of travelling. Um, so it's now about five o'clock in the evening. Um, what time of year is it? It is winter. It is middle of oh. winter. I will say it is, let me just get the month up. It is uh, deep winter. Um, so it's uh, Hammer, which is the name of the month, which is the, it's essentially January. So it's getting dark then. It is getting very dark. Yes, oh it's, no! It's getting pretty cold as well, so you would all be—I assume you would all be wrapped up decently with—you'd uh, have furs and stuff um, to, yeah. keep, to keep warm. Um, so as after you're travelling this lonely highway on the journey from Daggerford, you see the site, and Neville and Farrah, you're the first to spot it, and Neville, you would probably point it out to Farrah, the site of a humble settlement known as Mistvale. And it's quite a welcoming sight after being on the lonely okay. road. However, it does not take long for your mood to change, take a change of heart, as you are treated to a scene of sobbing townsfolk, ransacked homes with bestial claw marks along their walls, upturned market stalls, and most disturbingly, freshly dug graves for a many number of bodies. It's very clear to you all that significant suffering has been caused here. I'll move you over to Mr. Bale. Um, um, as the wagon rolls in and Neville sees more and more people, 
he sort of stands up and holds his arms in the air and he's shouting out, There, there, Miss Rail, do not fear. Stop your crying, the heroes are here. <laughs> many, many of the townspeople kind of look up to you and they're just they're just so despo- almost despondent. Um But as you do, um, Neville, you notice um a a, a a man walking out of the centre that you recognise. Um, you know him to be Radford Wester, the town's master. Mm-hmm. A very tall and handsome man um, in his mid-thirties. Um, you would know that he's well respected by the people of Miss Vale. Um, from what you've heard, anyway. Um, and he begins to approach you and he's like, Ah, oh, Neville, good to, good to see you. Mr. Daggerson. Mr. Wester. Sorry, he would, have, he would have referred to you Mr. Daggerson. That's my mistake. Mr. Daggerson. Mr. Wester. <laughs> it's good to be here. I, uh, <clears throat> I got your letter and uh, we put together this little group and we'll have this problem fixed in no time. Don't you worry. That's good to hear. Um, I've done my best to keep everyone's spirits up but uh, to no avail. Um, yes, sir. I, any questions? Um, as you can clearly see the You'd all be sort of in the centre of town at this point, I will say. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, just the one. Where's the problem? Pointing us in the right direction. Oh, we'll straight to it. business. That's what I like to see, Mister Daggerson. Um, yes, follow me. And he calls over like one of these, these like nearby trackers who's been waiting with him, and he's like, uh, "Helm, show him, show him the way." And uh, this young, younger man um, leads you off in this direction. And not before long, he points you through a number of tracks uh-huh. that are heading off in the direction of the Misty Forest. The on foot at this point. You would have that is interesting. Wagons in the... Uh, it's a very grassy grasslands from here on forward. You'd know that much. Yeah. So, I assume we're doing this in the night. I assume vamp... Uh, Werewolves don't come out during the day. Well, why not? Are they sleeping? Would now not be the best time? Uh, Radford well, would speak I mean. up and he's like, um, uh, the, the wolves tend to come out on um, the nights of full moons. Um, we do not expect to see any for a while, but last night, uh, uh, two nights ago, sorry, they was their most recent attack. Okay. So these are fresh. Um, but my tracker tells me, and he the tracker nods. We should follow the tracks at least, see where it leads. If we intend to fight them tonight, then yes. Let's get this over with. I agree. So what you what, what, what you want to do? It is dark. I'll say that much. Uh, Farrah's gonna. Use her cantrip, okay. to put her produce flame, which lets out light. Okay, are you gonna light like a torch, or are you, what are you gonna light? Well, it's the cantrip, produce flame, so it well, you... sheds ten foot light. So you just holding it in your hand, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you're holding this sort of like fire. You see Farah sort of <laughs> utter a, a incantation and do a sort of a somatic thing with her hand and a. a a small flame appears in her hand, which kind of takes um, the town's master aback for a second, and the scout kind of looks wide-eyed, and it's kind of they they kind of nod and them. Um, well, Mister Daggerson, no, I, I leave this in your capable hands. Indeed. They leave. So, are you guys gonna head out and follow the tracks? Yeah, let's go again. Let's do it. Okay. How um, much light does the produce flame shed? It says it, the flame sheds bright light in a ten foot radius and dim light for an additional ten feet. Okay, so not much. Not so much. I mean, it's better than because P- pitch will cast dancing lights as well. Yeah. Yep. So, any, any forms of light you wish to cast, feel free to. Because I pitch mean, is acutely aware that we've got what Helen, Neville, and Nigel. Mm-hmm. No, don't have dark vision. Yeah. Yeah, it's like half the party don't. So yeah. He basically give each of them a a little light orb floating above their head. Wow, thank you. Oh. Nigel, just try and catch it. <laughs> yeah, Neville's gonna do the same. 
<laughs> Great it's, minds um... think like Stefan. <laughs> oh yeah. It is not material, gentlemen. It is there to help you see. If you wish to have it in front or somewhere around you, just let me know. And Nigel just continues how much, to use the deep at how it. How like much light does that give out as well? It's only a ten foot dim light radius. Oh, dim light from yeah. each one. Yeah, okay. But at least they can but, see where they're walking. I was just debating whether or not to drop mine. But no, I probably won't. Mine is bright light and then dim light, so... Yeah, yeah you, I'm assuming you're leading. Yeah, let's lead. Right, so, if you'd like to tell me your marching order, please. Ferris first. Okay, who's second? <laughs> With the light. I mean... I'm take up the rear. Okay. <laughs> Had Pitch. Nigel better be somewhere near the front if he's the strongest. Or yeah. One of... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you want to go second then, Nigel? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be in... well, never be in front of Osgood. Okay, and Helen, so I assume you'd be behind five. Pitch. Yeah, in the middle. -ish. Okay. There we go. Cool. So. Conga, conga, conga. <laughs> so you. Um, carefully note where each track heads. At this point, they're fairly easy to follow. Um, marking them as you head towards the edge of the forest. And before long, you're... Um, before long, you find yourself um, at the edge of a uh, a huge, like, almost never-ending forest, it feels like. Mm. And... Do you head on in? The tracks are heading that way. Yeah. Okay. So, the woods, yeah. even though it's dark, the woods, uh, as you head uh, into the woods further, they, they, the woods darken even more as the trees mm. begin to close ranks and their needle-covered arms interlocking to block out any light from the moon or any, any other light. Um, you can see now where the forest gets its name as you spot a shroud of mist that begins to cover the ground and it becomes more and more difficult as more hours go by and it's difficult to stay on track as it's now about uh, two hours have passed, I'll say seven o'clock at this point um, Farah, if you're leading, can you please make me a survival or perception check of your choice okay they're both pretty good, let's do perception Oh come on! Okay, you um, you continue searching and looking, but it's so dark it's hard to see, even with your Am dark, I... even with your dark vision and the the mist on the floor, it's becoming harder okay. to see, um, okay. even with your light, um, and the search. Can I do? Sorry, a God. different. Can I do a check to see if I can see any animals? Yeah, do a perception check for me. Nope. No, you actually, even with that roll, you notice that you can't, literally can't see any. It's it's dark and quiet. You can't hear any animals. The the sound mm. is just really deathly quiet. And um, more hours. She's gonna, Sorry, go. She's gonna turn around. She's just gonna turn around. And say I'm I'm losing the trail a little bit here. Mist is very thick. Where the fuck are we? <laughs> It is um, getting late. Perhaps we should... I don't know if we will deal with it all this evening. We should think about where we're going to set camp. What are your thoughts, Mr. Agatston? You're the de facto leader here. Well, we're here to solve the problem. We haven't even found it yet, so just carry on. Chop, chop. <laughs> Do you know the woods well here, Mr. Dagerson? I've been in the woods before. What are you telling for? Perhaps it might help if you aided Farah up at the front. Oh, well, you know, I've, well, I say I've been in the woods, I've stumbled in and taken a leap, but you know, it's all the same, it's all the trees. <laughs> I see. If anybody wants to help me look for these trails, Nigel, perhaps, you're behind me. Yep. Roger, Roger, on it. So, more hours of fruitless searching happen. Feel free to make 
another roll, Farah, this time with advantage because of Nigel helping you. Perception, yeah. Perception or survival, up to you. Yeah. Hey! That's way <laughs> You do start to pick up on the trail again, but the mist on the ground has now begun turning into creeping walls of this grey mm. fog. And they've st- and before you know it, the entire group, they've this fog has silently enveloped you. And mm. now looking around, even with the Nat 20, you can no longer see more than a few feet in any direction. And the werewolf tracks have disappeared, and you have no idea which direction is which. Oh shit. Everybody, take hold of each other. We're losing each other in the mist here. She grabs Nigel's hand. <clears throat> Brave. Right, so, you continue onwards, and for more hours, you try and make your way through this mist, but it's it's, it's very late now. Midnight, probably. Um, and, <sighs> but eventually, the mist clears slightly. And you find yourself at this scene. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Cozy. <laughs> Look, there's, there's wagon trails. So. Is that wagon trails? <laughs> looks like it, actually. Like yeah. It. Mm. What you can see. You know as mm. much as Ozjed in this scenario, so. Yeah, yeah he points them out. So, you eventually find yourselves happen upon a muddy roadway out of the mists. You can see black pools of water that stand like dark mirrors in and around it, whilst trees, giant trees, loom on both sides of the road, their branches clawing at this mist. Mm. With no other sense of direction, it seems like the only wise thing to do would be to follow this road in search of some signs of life. Seems this is our only chance to see anybody these trails. Um, uh, Ostred points at the trails to Neville. He's like, you recognise where this leads? You're from... These are your hamlets, are they not? Uh, yeah, but I've not been there. I'm cut out there, Steph. Oh, George, put on some headphones. <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind oh, muting your mic, George, thank you. <laughs> What did you say, Steph? You cut out for me. Oh, is his mic broken? I think, yeah, I can't hear think your mic might be broken, Steph. Yeah, he's... Nope. Nope, still, still can't, can't hear you. Are these part of the scene or are they just the background? Like, are there little fetishes hanging from branches and are there markings on the tree? There are, actually. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, Pitch would point that well, out then. Shit. <laughs> um, I don't mean to alarm anyone, but there's strange symbols on the trees and uh, mm. fetishes hanging from the branches. I... Does anybody recognise these symbols? Oh, can can Ostrad do religion to see if he recognises? Yes, them? feel free. Good thing it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you don't recognise. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't recognise it. Who drew that fucking little figure in the back? <laughs> Just noticed that. This um, thing you, is cute. Yeah, you don't you don't recognise any of them. Is Stefan back? Yeah. Hi. Hello again. And what did you say before, Steph? You cut out halfway through. Oh, did I? Shit. Uh... Just that I've never <clears throat> I've never come down this far before. I'd have no reason to. I'm sure if we just keep going, we should leave the woods. Hmm. Okay. Well, we have no can... choice but to keep going at this point, I don't think. Can Pitch take a copy of the symbols? Um, yeah. He's got he's got parchment and an ink and an ink pen. Yeah, feel free to, yeah. Okay. I'm um, just going to say he's got a copy, right? I don't... Do I need yeah. to draw it out as no, Tom? No, that's, that's fine. you got a copy. Um, I will okay. say... Would, would you have shown Farrah them? The symbols, yeah. Farrah, you would notice these symbols immediately, and mm. you would notice they are written in the, the druidic language. Oh, shit. Oh, really? or at least this one is, and these ones are kind of more... Um, more just 
basic symbols. Um, this one in particular is um, one um, that kind of is like a warning. The language itself is not always clear, but this one appears to be some kind of warning um, of danger ahead. And these ones are just more kind of these. These ones are more like it's odd. This one is more like a, a, a symbol of danger, and this one is a more of a symbol of like welcoming. Conflicting messages here. Yeah. Um, this one, she's just communicating to the group. This one is mentioning danger ahead, and uh, however, those up ahead are, are welcoming. Now, well, I think we should be very cautious. Can you do a perception check for me, please, Farah? Yep. Let's do it. Yeah, with that, I'd also say you'd notice that this symbol looks a lot older than these mm. ones. Okay. I mean, for this this symbol here has been here much longer. The welcoming messages seem fairly new. What uh, what language is it in? I do not recognize it myself. Oh, that is Druidic. Oh. Yeah. Do we oh. continue? Okay. So, do you follow the road down? Farah is going to tell everyone to just sneak. We're all going to sneak. I okay, think. roll a group stealth check for me. Oh, no! <laughs> Here it comes! <laughs> the inaugural Ostred roll. Yes! <laughs> nice natural one for Ostred. <laughs> okay. One! <laughs> yeah, that's a... I think we just oh, got George left to do. Yep. So, okay. You seem like you're... You feel, um... You feel Ostred and Farah sort of walk ahead and they're kind of in Ostred's heavy armour and Farah kind of following behind his footsteps, kind of his deep footsteps in this mud, uh, muddy path. Um, it takes a, like, pitch and, and Neville as well, you kind of leading the group a little bit, try and come to the front and then you're like, no, quiet, quiet. And uh, Nigel kind of <laughs> follows up as well and it's kind of like exaggeratingly sneaking like a Looney Tunes cartoon <laughs> almost but it's actually quite effective in this muddy conditions and Helen is just using her monk training to just slip in between and out of the trees just almost completely silently as you head I'm on I'm actually forward. quite afraid of Helen yeah. Helen's got skills but this road is almost never ending as you continue for hours and eventually um, on the way is there anything you want to say to each other? This, this, it's been, I'll say, four hours of following this road, and during this, it's, Jesus. it's, it's just almost seemingly never ending. We must be pretty fucking knackered by this point. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone bring any refreshment? Well, uh, it's refresh. We've got some rations, but um, most of them are on the cart. We need to sleep. It's been a long time traveling. It's about is four it, in the morning. Is it a good idea to sleep in the mud? I think that'd be ideal. Unless everyone can climb trees. What? Climb a tree? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I will say you're all getting very close to being able to take a point of exhaustion um, or being a check for it. So you're starting to feel very tired. Well, we've just got we've got to take a break. Come on, my yeah, man, you're then, killing me. Yeah, let's. Yeah, we'll take a break. Um, let's at least set up so we can get out of the mud as much as possible. Okay, you know, just going to go go place. find an area without mud. <laughs> so do you? We'll take a. You will take a um. A long rest then. You set up camp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. It's been long enough. And it doesn't. Do we need someone to keep guard? Keep watch. Yeah, Pharaoh's gonna. Pharaoh only needs to sleep for like four hours. Nigel. Oh, yeah. will be second watch or whatever. Okay. Pharaoh will take two watches. Okay, so Pharaoh's taking two watches because of her elfness. 
um, and Nigel's taking the other watch. So, is anyone helping Nigel or Farrah, or are you just going to try and sleep through the night? Uh. <laughs> no, Neville's out. He's out. I'll try to sleep. Yeah. Do you, do you okay. want me to stay up as well, Farrah? I think two eyes are better than one in this situation. All right. Page yeah. will join Farrah for the first watch, but he has to sleep up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Farrah, if you'd like to take the first watch with a perception check with advantage. Okay. It'll be a nine or a natural twenty. Hey. Hey. So okay. you'd listen out into the, the the woods, and they're so quiet, unusually quiet, almost unnaturally quiet. And Pitch kind of points it out to you as well. This is just really sort of freaking it's, it's 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 unnerving you um and this is an unusual wood i can't even hear any animals and the more you listen the more you notice that this mist is just getting thicker and thicker and surrounding you almost mm. moving in this unusual way and looks unnatural being a druid though would mm-hmm. you notice because obviously druids are all weathery as well. Yeah. Should she realise what it would be or could, what it could be? You have no idea. Okay. You know, it's a, you just think it's a mist. You, it it looks unnatural. You you don't know what it would be, even with your druidic back druidic background. <clears throat> it's it's okay. fe- it feels scary to you. Um. Okay. She's she's nervous, but she's sticking there. Okay. Um, Maybe you should sleep close when you go to sleep, Hitch. I'll do that, Farah. Thank you for, for taking the lead in this situation. It's difficult. Without your keen yeah. eyes, I would feel completely lost. And with that, he'll give Farah a bardic inspiration. Oh shit, do you want to explain oh, what that does? Yeah. So everyone knows <laughs> for future reference. As a bonus action, a creature other than myself within 60 feet that can hear me uh, gains an inspiration die, which at the moment is a d6. For 10 minutes, so if Farrah wanted to investigate something or anything, the creature can add it to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. This can be added right. after seeing the roll, but before knowing the outcome. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then Pitch heads off to sleep. Alright. Farrah, if you'd like to take second watch, another perception check, and you can use Pitch's Bardic Inspiration die if you'd like to as well. Let's do it. So it's a 19. Um, Add that D6. Um, what was it? D6, yeah? D6, yes. D6. D6. Yeah. So, nice. at 22 altogether. Further listening out, it's, again, you're, you feel like your eyes and your ears are keen and they are acutely aware of things around you, but it's quiet. So quiet. Mm. And the mist still just gets thicker. Harder mm. to see. And to the point where if you were camping somewhere in the woods here, you would not be able to see any of these trees on the other side of the road. Fuck. Yeah, Farrah's going to sit as close as possible to the group, but still keep an eye out. Right, and then would you wake up... Um, ne- well, who was doing the last watch? I think it was... Um, Nigel. Nigel, yeah, Nigel. if you'd like to wake up Nigel. Yeah, she's just going to wake up Nigel, but she's also going to wake up um, Ostrid as well. Can Two you sets of eyes is better than one, guys. I think you should both keep an eye out. Can you leave me with some kind of torch or fire or something, please? Because <laughs> otherwise I'm not going to be able oh. to see anything. That's a good point. I, I was going to Austria... say, before Pitch went to sleep, I was going to mention it earlier. Yeah. He has a lamp that he would leave out to yeah. be used if needed. There's that's, only two oil flasks there. That's so. perfectly reasonable. And I'd say before you went to bed, Pitch, you would notice that even with your lamp's light, it almost like reflects off the mist. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. really, it's, it's not really helping light up things that Oh, nice. So, yeah. mm-hmm. a lamp is available to use. Okay. okay. Since, since we entered these woods, mm-hmm. did, has anyone, like, heard or seen any kind of wildlife? No, um, Farrah did look early. I don't think she mentioned it, or did did you? Would you have mentioned uh, it, Farrah? Uh, well, she just mentioned it to Pitch, but not before that. No. Okay. Yeah, Farrah herself. You um, you wouldn't know this as Neville, but Farrah um, didn't hear any 
signs of wildlife and pit and Neville even if you were to make a perception you know you would not be able to hear any either um, it's deathly quiet okay so she's woken up Ostrid and not, uh, Nigel and she's going to go to sleep okay. when Ostrid wakes up yeah. does, thick, does the fog look thicker it, than when he definitely uh. it's even harder to see than it was before we are vulnerable um, in this mist, I think. Oh. More, more eyes, the better. Not a full moon. No, but still. Um, and then she's going to sleep. Okay. Or we'll do her trance, yeah, anyway. Yeah, do her trance. So, uh, Nigel and Osdred, you're awake for the last watch. Um, feel free either to make two separate perception checks, or if one of you wants to lead it and the other can do it with advantage, it's up to you. Well, Ostred has dark vision, so I guess maybe... Yeah, he's... it's probably best if okay. you feed it, if that's alright. So, Ostred, do a perception check with advantage, then. Oh, there we go. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, fucking my. snake eyes! <laughs> Oh Linda. shit! That's, I think that's the first time that's ever happened since we started playing on Roll Twenty. That's one in four hundred, oh. maybe. The first campaign where all the characters die within the first three hours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Ostred, you is so fucking. It just it's so much mist. You can't, and you're just like trying to push through it with your dark vision, and you can't. It's just all you can make out is the road, and beside you, and but beyond that, nothing. He's like, have you seen anything, Nigel? No. I, I got bad feeling. Yes. It doesn't feel like doom before he's with us. <laughs> we... Oh, that thing moved. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we we got to keep extra careful watch. Oh my god, all the trees are moving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone's doing that. I love it. Um, oh yeah, I think um, he's just fixated, just staring down the road. Yeah, and that's the one part you would notice, Ostred, that is even with those two natural ones, that the mist <laughs> is 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 less so on the road itself. Um, it's heavily enveloping the the sort of around you, but it's not. It's almost not like not entering your space at this point. It's kind of leaving the fireplace and your any sleeping area untouched, but surrounding you, it's it's heavy. Sorry, can I ask? Is mm -hmm. it um like it's trying to lead us somewhere, or do a do a Sorry. insight check? Um. Oh, I do actually. Uh -huh. Nigel, you get this gut. No, you get a gut it. feeling, Nigel, that. It's whilst maybe not the mist is trying to lead you somewhere, it kind of feels like it almost it, it's not necessarily trying to lead you somewhere, but you get a feeling that you get this gut feeling that the path, the, the road will have will eventually lead to somewhere, and it, it has to it surely has to lead to somewhere. And you just get this gut feeling of like the mist is unusual and it makes you feel uncomfortable, but you think. Maybe if we continue mm -hmm. on the road ahead, it'll be okay. So, a number of hours pass, and each of you, you can all take the benefits of a long rest oh, as lovely. it passes nice. without incident. But when each of you awake, it's almost as dark as it was when you fell asleep, and you, it's almost impossible to tell what time it is. We're Does pretty filthy as well, right? Yeah, in the mud, in the mud you'd be absolutely filthy, yeah. Oh. Hopefully we can find somewhere to wash some mud off at least. So, oh, have we found these pesky walls yet? What, while you were sleeping, Mr. Daggerson? Yeah, I don't know. They might have turned up. Might have dealt with them. We're mm. not going to leave you out. Are you normally a heavy sleeper, Neville? Yeah, he probably would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's continue. 
we are in much the same situation as before, it seems, but we were not hurt in the night. That is something to be thankful for. Certainly. I was worried that we would be ambushed in that fog. Or this fog. And yet here we stand. Let's get the thing. Let's All go. Right. Petrol cast dancing lights again. Okay. Yep. Produce flame again. And let's go. There we are. Following the road before. So, you follow the path ahead. The only place that's not enveloped by this mist. And after about half an hour, some light starts sort of trickling through the treetops. <clears throat> you can see a little oh, bit shit. more. Farrah's excited. And then <laughs> further, another half an hour. So about an hour of travelling in total since you slept. He takes you to an opening in the forest. <clears throat> oh. And the fog now almost spilling out behind you and swallowing up the road. Ooh. And you just walk down. Pharaoh runs out, grabs some fresh air out of this mist. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So, ahead from the impenetrable woods on both sides of the road, you see ahead, Farah are these high stone buttresses looming grey in the fog. Huge iron gates hang on the stonework and dew clings with a cold tenacity to the rusted bars. Two headless statues of armed guardians flank the gate, their heads now lying among the weeds at their feet. They greet you only with silence and I shall move you to... Can I do a... Um... Stone cunning uh, <laughs> check to see if it recognizes what sort of culture built this architecture. Yeah, do a history check for me with your stone cunning. So it should be uh, extra five? Oh, no, yeah, it should be five overall. So 16. So 16. Um, you look at this and it looks. The immediate thing is that it looks ancient. It looks hundreds of years old. Um, it's the most immediate thing that stands out to you. In terms of culture, you you get the impression that this is... You've heard tales of maybe, you know, more ancient cultures having kind of more um, of these sort of grand designs sometimes. Castles you see these days sometimes are more functional, whilst this wall looks more... Um, more kind of in a way more like crafted with love um you also see a symbol here um which is like a almost like a, a raven in front of a a large castle that sits on the top of a cliff top but you're not familiar with it and the stone the stone itself like i said it looks ancient um beyond that is it the walls of like a settlement? You're not sure. The walls run far and you cannot see beyond when the, the fog still oh. takes up and into the trees. These torches are on. They are lit, yes. Ooh. And he's so he looks around, he's like Mr. Daggerson. We can't have walked far. Are there any other hamlets around Mistvale? And he looks up at the walls. This looks too large and foreboding for that. And someone's clearly here. Well, to be honest with you, we, we were in those woods for an awful long time. I'm sure we probably just got lost and took the wrong turn. I've, I've no idea where we are. Farah, how far could we have walked? Do you tell me? <laughs> uh, well, you've... You travelled, um, you left Mistvale at approximately 7 o'clock and you stopped travelling at 4 o'clock in the morning, essentially. Um, so now it's probably, you reckon, about midday, maybe, with everything that you've slept and walked. Um, so, in terms you can of... You see the sun now, surely. Uh, it's... You see the sun, but it's heavily obscured by cloud. Right. Um, okay. It's almost... It's, it's, it's hard to see. The sun is not as bright as it you'd expect it to be even even for a winter uh, winter morning winter sort of mid afternoon uh, you'd expect it to be brighter it's just really still quite dark 
but not dark yeah. light enough to see but it's still very yeah it's, it's, obscure. it's difficult it's difficult to say but we were traveling for a long while true yeah. but could be if you say that. you travel five miles an hour you'd probably say you could have covered so uh, let me just do maths quickly so probably nine times five we're at 45 miles you probably could have traveled Jesus. we weren't traveling in one direction so we could have walked around that's like the maximum exactly extent. yeah yeah the fog was heavily obscuring any tracks as well so honestly we could be anywhere seems strange that this would be here and not on any map indeed it's quite a large structure um does pharaoh recognize any of the symbols or anything um i'll say now that you don't no okay well <clears throat> this place might not be worth putting on any map look at it shit hole <laughs> I'm sorry, I I'm really sure. have to quickly run to the toilet, so carry on role playing if you'd like to. I was going to point to the torches. He's like, someone's clearly home. Um, do we think werewolves could create this kind of structure? Or at least live in there, I suppose. I think either way, it's either in there or back into the woods and the fog true and i don't really feel like going back into the fog no what do you think nigel does it look like somewhere worth exploring nigel nigel's scared speechless i have been actually replying but i've just re remembered i muted my mic hey everyone uh, yeah. Oh, I'm back, sorry. Not, not sure, good idea. So we all ran in, Lewis. We, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we found this old vampire guy, we beat him up. The <laughs> end. <laughs> back to Tom's campaign. <laughs> um, Fuck no, Tom's not ready. So, what are you guys doing? Are you just hanging around or are you going to approach the wall? I think this is the only way forward. Right, so Farrow, are you leading the way? Sure. As you approach the gates, they begin to creak open. <laughs> Creepy. Oh my god. <laughs> as they now wide open as you pass through, seemingly completely of their own accord. Farrow is quite shocked that they open by itself. <laughs> Did you base this bit on the haunted mansion? This is all in the book. <laughs> the Disney haunted mansion. Yeah. Eddie Murphy comes out. Oh no. Donkey! Sarah <laughs> steps forward into the, the thing. Okay. You pass through and more towering trees await beyond you. Oh no. No fog though. The fog is still there, hanging in the air. Mm. Most... How far can we see these walls? Like, how long are they? How far can we see them go? As far as you can see, they just go into the woods about maybe 100 feet, 200 feet down. Um, and then they carry on through the woods, but you can see no further than that, as the fog obscures your vision. Seems empty. Mm -hmm. mm. Ho, are you carrying on? Yeah. Right. You, you carry on upon the road, the path still heading on forward, as you head back into the forest. Oh. So, inside you see towering trees whose tops are lost in heavy grey mist now, block out all but a death grey light. The tree trunks are unnaturally close together. And the woods have the silence of a forgotten grave, yet exude the feeling of an unvoiced scream. I was trying to ask uh, Farrah something. Mm -hmm. um, like, is the flora here? What did you expect from a sword coast? That's a good question. Do a nature check. Um, oh no. That roll, you look around and 
Um, there's not a huge amount of... Um, it's mostly mud, but there is shrubs on the floor, and there's a few that seem familiar, but also a few that you don't recognise so much. Well, we um, said about the trees as well. And the, the, right. and the, tree, the trees themselves definitely feel... The, the, how unnaturally close they are to each other feels very unusual and like unlike any forest you've seen before. Yeah, so she had mentioned that yeah, the, these trees are so close together. I I don't know how how their root system works, but this is not normal. And she points to a few shrubs on the ground. And these I've never seen these here before either. Ostrid takes his green topaz in his hand and he just like holds it. For What's everyone else doing? Pitch has been slowly getting closer to Nigel as a source of comfort. Walking side by side with him now. I think we should all stay very close together. Helen, Nigel, um, and Neville, what are you doing? Yeah, just keeping all huddled in the group. Okay. Nigel's just clutching. Sorry. I was going to say, Neville's just got his hands in his pockets. He's just trodling along. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Nigel's clutching Mr. Snufflax under his arm, like, oh shit, I don't like it. Okay. So, let me just quickly, as you head now, the woods get darker and darker to take you to the next map. So, feel free to place yourself on the right side of this map, but can you see it? Let me. Nothing at the moment. Uh, let me place it for you then, because. Um, I placed, but I cannot see. Oh, I know why it is. It's because I've set up the wrong dynamic lighting on here. It doesn't really massively matter if you see this, so. I'll, uh... Sorry, I'd set this map up fucking ages ago, so. Oh, good, oh, good. Are we cutting our peaks? Uh, let me one second and I'll let you know. Oh, All right. Okay. Cool. So next to Farah, oh. on the right hand side of the map. Mm, delicious 60 feet. Mm, yes. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> so feel free if um, you've got any lights that you want to let me know what light sources people are carrying here. Yeah, I've got the produced flame still on. So I cast it again or whatever. That's fine. So tell me how much vision that gives off. So it has to be in my hand, but it's ten foot radius and then dim light for an, a next another ten. Okay. Helen will light a torch with that. As well. What is how much yeah. torch does it give you, George? Twenty twenty, I think. Twenty twenty. Okay, cool. Yeah. So Farah's giving off light to the three that can't see. Okay, yes, and any, yeah, any, anyone else, or is that all right? I mean, I can give people dancing lights. So Neville, Nigel, and and Helen would have <laughs> ten feet if needed. So you could bring out like a little circle for that, Lewis, and then just do like yeah, so three little circles with their own thing. Just doing that for you. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I'm going to give it... Yeah, let's do this one, I think. Alright, let me just quickly give this control to Tom. I assume it's a yellow, right? Play with me. Can be whatever colour you like. What would you prefer, Mr. Daggerson? Well, I've already made it blue, so it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, is blue ah, light, Mr. Daggerson. <laughs> <laughs> so, how much does your dancing light give, sorry, Tom? Ten feet dim light. That's it. Uh, Each so... one. Ten and ten. Ten and ten. And then finally, this one. Ten and ten. Who keeps like kicking their desk around? Today. <laughs> um. So can you can you control and see from them, Tom? Uh, my little blue things. Yeah. Yeah, 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 awesome. yeah, yeah. So that's your dancing lights. If you want to place them however you want. 
Have you given them... It's only 10 feet of dim light. They don't have 10 bright, 10 dim. Oh, they sorry. I thought they had dim. friend. That's no. my bad. I should change it's pretty, that. No, pretty that's small just mine. Dim light. Starts Tom, why did you have to tell him? Because <laughs> I'm an honest boy. Thank you for telling me. That's no, alright. That, I'll take that inspiration. There you then. go. <laughs> but my my produced flame does have 10 and then 10 dim. Yeah, I've given that to you. Okay, so. cool. Yeah. Cool. I can't. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll say for this then because Helen's lighting with a torch as well. Pitch is kind of shooting out the orbs in front of us to help yeah. light the way a bit. Okay. Mm. Okay, Ferris moving forward. Alright. So. Yeah, keep going. So. Keep up, everyone. Farrah, as you get to about there, you catch yeah. the scent of death on the air, <laughs> coming from this direction. Yeah, she's gonna mention that. Does anyone else, anyone else smell that? It's familiar. <laughs> it smells like dead man. It smells like abattoir. Ooh. Maybe we shouldn't have a look. Oh, we don't like this cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Neville, you stand back. Pitch will send the dancing lights out that way. When we did the okay. long rest, should we have had a ration? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'll have to keep reminding you in this, and people will have to help me remember. Yes, you all consume one ration if you could, please. Okay. One ration. You're welcome. Thank did you, Stefan, Farrah did hand it. any out? Because Pitch doesn't have any. Oh, uh, well, she's got <laughs> ten, so... Well, the thing, the ones I bought at the shop are on the wagon, but I do have some on me if you want one of them. I feel like we would have taken them off the wagon. Yeah, you. I think you would have taken anything important off the wagon. Okay. Anything, so, anything so, that you saying, couldn't carry, definitely not. I'm just, saying I didn't, I'm just saying I didn't add them to my thing, so... I'll allow you to, it's fine. So, okay. we've each got five rations, but now we need to take one back away, so we've actually yes. got four left. Yeah, now. that sounds fine to me. Okay, well. start with 10 rations. Tom didn't. He got the, the bard starter kit, which is like, here's your fancy perfume, <laughs> your, your paper and your ink. <laughs> so if anyone needs some perfume, hit me up. <clears throat> I've got 10, what the fuck? I've already got 10. Yeah, a lot of kits start with 10. Okay. But the entertainer one doesn't. I've got yeah, so... No. So is that all the rations that I bought that are, are gone? I bought like five days worth, so I don't know what. Well, one well, ration is a day's worth of yeah. food. So you yeah, bought but... five rations for each person. Okay, even though I, I didn't actually have the gold for that though, so I'm just saying. Well, I, you had funds. enough for you had enough for one day, I'll say. Okay. So. So five. So five rations that were split between the group. Okay. Wait. So we don't have five each now down to four. We just oh, we don't have that's fine. I'll allow that. I'm not too bothered about okay. that. The... I'll, I'll chip in. I'll take some gold. You're out. gonna yeah. die, so it doesn't matter if you're hungry. All right, yeah. I've got nine, so I'm just starting with nine, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, pitch. Pitch wants to peer up here. Okay, do yeah, do, do, do an investigation well. check for me. Ferris helping. Helping. With advantage. Yeah. Hey. Help my zero modifier. Pitch, you, you sort of looking out. It's hard to see with how misty the trees line is, but the smell is just so pungent on the air, and you get, you feel like it's coming from this direction more. But you can't tell, like you can't see anything because it's just without going in there yourself. We'll have to Ostr head in. Ostrid's wandering off. Ostrid, turned back. Didn't realise you were going. We thought maybe we should investigate. What? Probably worth checking this area. What? What? Nigel, could you push through the, the trees? Yeah, uh, okay. I'll be right behind you. I'll keep my hand on your back. I no one see dead man. Well. So, after a few moments, you... The foul scent leads you to a human corpse. Oh, guys. 
Oh no! Oh, stinky. The, <laughs> the human corpse is half buried in the underbrush, about fifteen feet from the road. It's a young man, and he appears to be just a commoner from his clothings. Um, his clothes, his muddy clothes are—they're torn and they're raked with claw marks. Um, crows have been at the body, and it's surrounded by paw prints. The man has obviously been dead for several days, and he holds a crumpled envelope in one hand. Mm. He's going to go up to his body. He's going to put his hand on his head. And he's going to be like, they do before and carry you to the afterlife. Okay. He's going to look over his body a little bit. Medicine. Okay, yeah, do, do a medicine check for me. Oh, please don't ra- raise a several days hey. dead corpse. Oh from the dead <laughs> you can clearly see this man died from the injuries that I described with the claw marks um, what I will say is that from any how much how much um, how much t- uh, time would have Ostrid spent performing medicine what do you mean would he have because I, I know it's not particularly part of his background that he's spent any time trying to heal people but has he done that at all um, as part of the right. company or before then? He's patched people up when they've needed it in the company. Okay. He hasn't he studied it himself, but he knows little bits. Yeah, I'd say with that then, you you recognise maybe the marks are from maybe some kind of bestial creature. But you're not 100% sure. Like a werewolf. <laughs> Possibly. Does he say that? Um, in, in that voice? He's like, pop. Looks like the werewolf got him. Well, Do you reckon he's from Miss Vale? We should ask Mr. Daggerson. Someone say my name. Is no this problem. perhaps one of your people? No, oh, good lord. Who's it? Is that a no? I don't know. Do I recognize him there? You don't. I've never seen him in my life, the poor sob. What happened to him? <sighs> At this it looks point, like we might be getting close, though. At this point, you hear from in within the woods oh. the sound of oh. a wolf howling. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, Osdred's going to that, that snap up the envelope in there, guys. Yeah. yeah. Let's all get back onto the path. Yes, clear line of sight would be. Yes, good. werewolf, don't go on path. <laughs> it's sassy Nigel today. <laughs> Didn't sleep so good. Anyone looking at the letter? No, I was just just stuffed in his pocket. Okay. Uh, Pitch saw that because <laughs> P- yeah. Pitch was going to reach for the letter himself. Yeah. We should read the letter, Ostred. There might be something useful. Is this the time, Pitch, in the middle of a dark wood? I can read and walk at the same time. It might give us some notion of the location, perhaps. I mean, why else would they be out here? Ostred sighs, and he's like, pulls it out, and he puts on his little reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You notice that the letter has a large B set into its wax seal, as in the letter B. The parchment is worn and flimsy, and you open it to read ahead. I'll um, put this in... I'll just put it in yours for now, Kieran, and then when you want to share it, I can add it to Moore's. Okay. Ostred's not wrong, though. Do we want to move or stay? We could try and fortify here if we want to. How far away did the the howl sound? Uh, maybe another 30 feet into the woods. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. We should definitely prepare. Quickly reading the letter. And he's like, does anyone know where Barovia is? I no idea. have not heard of that place. Have you never heard of it? None of you have ever heard of it. Hmm. Something about a vampire. Perhaps a vampire? Vampire. Perhaps vampire. Does anyone know what that might be? I don't know. Who's vampire? He... He reads it, and he's, he gives it to Pitch, seeing it's like, go on, bard boy, you read it. 
Okay, I'm gonna boy. put it all in Fair, seal. Fair is looking around for... Keeping an eye out. Ooh. Pitch will read it out loud. But he's... Well, yeah, Pitch is like, we should be ready for attack. Yeah, Fair is ready. Ready and up. Yep, that's fine. Uh, the letter says, Hail thee of might and valor. I, the burgomaster of Barovia, send you honor with despair. My adopted daughter, the fair Irina Koliana, has been these past nights bitten by a vampire. For over 400 years, this creature has drained the lifeblood of my people. Now, my dear Irina languishes and dies from an unholy wound caused by this vile beast. He has become too powerful to conquer. So I say to you, give us up for dead and encircle this land with the symbols of good. Let holy men call upon their power that the devil may be contained within the walls of weeping Barovia. Leave our sorrows to our graves and save the world from this evil fate of ours. There is much wealth entrapped in this community. Return for your reward after we are all departed for a better life. Signed, Kolyan Indirovich, Burgomaster. So... You heard of everyone. Barovia. Go get this reward. So this Barovia is, contains this vampire. It... Have you ever heard... Fifth... There's nowhere oh. called Barovia within... What, 30 miles of Daggerfish? I recognise none of these names, unfortunately. Where the fuck are we? I don't know, but maybe we should keep moving. There's a that was quite nearby that howl. It it says to leave, be outside the walls. Perhaps we should turn back. We not know where war is. We passed but the walls coming if in. We, if we go back, we only back. we only go back to the misty wood. I I don't see much purpose. That's true. I, I think we should just keep moving, personally. Alright. Well, On your lead, Farah. Like flashed up, by the way. <laughs> what was that? Something flashed up. I don't know what it was. I don't know. I didn't put anything up. Okay. <gasps> Nigel, <gasps> Helen, yeah. stay close. Right. Nigel won't do this. I'm going to keep us all safe, Nigel. Farrah. Nigel. Go home. Yeah. So as they're walking, Farrah's still looking around for the wolf. Yeah. Do a perception check. <laughs> Helen will help. Yep. Do with advantage then. Great. You look around, but the, the mist just covering the sides of the mm. roads and the trees, but there's no sound. You listen out more carefully and no howling anymore. It seems you're retreating back to the road as granted you their lack of interest for now. Mm. I can't hear the howling anymore. Perhaps it's moved away. Maybe we should bury that guy. Uh, he's... The fuck? So he keeps flashing up. <laughs> Is it a ping? No, no. I had it as well. The whole map just kind of flickered. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Might be just something to do with all the lights going on. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. So we assume that man was a messenger, yes? Well, either that or he was dragged here by the wolf from the t mist veil. Even though, unless none of you found anything on him, I don't believe he would have had his reward on him. So it must still be up for picking. True. Maybe he was running out, running in, who knows. And as, as for burying him, Ostrid, I don't think it's worth... worth um, garnering the attention of the wolf. Maybe. So, you carry on in the woods for another, say, half an hour. 
Um, similar road, similar feeling, just quiet. And eventually, however, you seem to reach another exit. Mm. The woods, the break in the trees, they slowly start to thin. And you arrive at the edge of the forest. And now, as you do, you see the sight of a valley mm. ahead of you. You see mountains in the distance. You see barely able to make out what appears to be a cliff with some kind of castle on top. And ahead of you, on to the to the south of you, you can just about in this miles away, but you can barely just make out what appears to be a large river running. And also, as you continue further for more more time, let me just quickly check on making sure you where you are on the right map. Da -da -da -da. One second. Pitch will be trying to comfort weak Nigel as they're going along. Just keeping a, a hand on his shoulder and how, how making conversation. It's about hmm, it's about It's about a mile away. Okay, no. I was gonna say go have a wash, but no. And uh, ahead of you, also about a mile away, you see as this gra now the road sort of starts to become more like gravel and you can just about what makes out it looks like a village within the mist it's tall houses dark as tombstones mm. and as you approach closer to the village your attention is turned to the sound of a soft whimpering and your eyes are drawn towards a pair of children who are standing in the middle of the lifeless road ahead of you. Oh, Jesus. Oh. oh, look there. Couple of kids. Oi. Uh, what are they doing in the middle of this wood? As... Um, I was trying to look at the river. Mm. Mm -hmm. he, know, he, know, he knows the Sword Coast pretty well, right? Yeah. You've so, walked one out of the years. He would, like... He try and identify which river that was. You, the only river nearby, is the Delambir River, which you know doesn't actually pass through the Misty Forest whatsoever. Yeah. So, as far as you know, there's there's no rivers on the Sword Coast that would pass through where you think you might be. Yeah. So he turns to Pitch, and he's like, "We're not on the Sword Coast anymore. That river doesn't line up with anything." That's not possible. How could we be anywhere but the Sword Coast? There's no river that passes through the forest, but that is clearly a river. Pitch looks deeply disturbed by this. The um, children, we should help them. Yeah, Neville's gonna yeah. start making his way over to them. Okay, <laughs> as you do, no, I'll... Sorry, go on. You can now see that these children look like this oh no <coughs> they look scary both young the girl appearingly taller and older the younger boy the boy is weeping and clutching a stuffed doll and as you approach closer you can see the girl is trying to shush the boy and as you who, who's a, who's leading who's approaching first I think Neville went out first. Yeah. Yeah, Neville. If everyone else was hesitant, then Neville would have just charged forward. Okay, so, right. what'd you say? Uh, 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 kiddies, what are you doing out here? You alright? The, the girl shushes the boy again and turns to you and says, there's, there's a monster in our house. And then she points to this tall brick row house that's at the end of a gravel path. That's on the edge of town and clearly seen better days. Its windows are, are dark and it has a gated portico on the ground floor and the rusty gate is slightly ajar. Farrah looks to the rest of the group and pulls out a rapier. Perhaps that's the werewolf. 
We should go. Why did it ask what kind of monster it is? Well, is it worth waiting? We should go get it. Well, it's it a monster, not plural monsters. Did you I see the monster, is. children? So you're all gathering around at this point, and the girl, the boy is like really huddling into the girl's mm. side, and the girl kind of looks up and you looking, kind of takes a step back for a moment, looking all quite intimidated by this. Do they seem kind of urgent? They, um, how do you mean urgent? Like, like are they like trying to get away? I think? No, they're just standing there. Okay. Um, the girl. Horrified by my devilish <laughs> appearance. Yeah, in fact, you would, with your passive insight, um, Pitch, you would notice that they, the glances towards you in particular do kind of, not not terrify them, but they're just kind of like a bit more trying to keep... Yeah. They, they seem more comforted by Neville than the rest of yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um, Pit, Pitch will sit, kind of like sit down, like squat down on his haunches and just says, um, my name is Pitch. What What are your names? The girl, like after a moment of quiet, um, my name is Rosavalda, but you may call me Rose, and this is my brother Thornbolt, but you may call him Thorn. It is lovely to meet you both. And who is this? And he points to the stuffed toy. The little boy, um, just sort of looks up and he says, um, hold on, give me one sec. Uh... Pharaoh is keeping an eye on the door. He looks up to you and he says, This is, Fa- this is Falcon. Hmm. Well, would uh, Falcon like to play with a, a friend? Kind of. And he, he, he like kind of gestures slightly. towards weak Nigel to, to squat down as well. You want to play, Mr. Snufflux? The, the boy just nods like silently. Okay. And he, like swings him up on his shoulders so he's like sitting on his on his shoulders and he's the boy's like clutching as you try to he like pulls away massively and then and the girl kind of steps back as well <sighs> they appear quite scared still nigel just um perhaps mr snufflex could play with falcon for now <clears throat> oh mr snufflex better come back and then he hands him over the, the girl takes the doll and hands it to her young, uh, what you assume now at this point is her younger brother, or you know because she told. Um, and uh, he sort of takes it and he kind of just holds both the dolls quite tightly together. Pitch brings one of the dancing lights over and kind of like hovers it above them just as a source of, of light and kind of like shifts the colours a little bit. Um, can you tell me anything about the monster? Um, the what girl, did you see? The girl pipes up and she says, um, <laughs> I, I didn't see the monster, but we've heard its, its terrible sounds coming from the basement. Terrible mm. howls. Yeah, Pit, <laughs> uh, with, with howls, Pitch looks up at Farrah and gives her a nod. Oh, yeah, please don't tell back. me it's going to be like a, a, the parents' sex dungeon or something. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, well, Thorn, perhaps um, Nigel here to to fight the monster. He needs to be at his best, and to be at his best, he needs his good friend, Mister Snufflex, with him. <laughs> it it okay. He keep Mister Snufflex safe. Okay. All right. Are you okay with that, Thorn? He just nods silently. All right. The girl, well, uh, the girl speaks up for a point, second. Steps between the kids and the door. Okay, but the girl speaks up and she um, she says she looks to you, Pitch, at this point, feeling a little bit more comforted by how sort of forward you've been, but in a in a kind tone. And she says, "Oh, our baby, our baby brother is our baby brother Walter. He is in he's in the nursery on the third floor." I we will get him. Don't don't you worry. We um you two stay safe out here. Yeah. Farah, there is a small child inside. We should hurry, you are right to say. 
Portrait looks down at them. Yeah. He's like, where are your parents? We think they... We're not sure. We think... You... We know that they keep the monster trapped in the basement, so maybe they're down there as well. Pharaoh's feeling a little bit more urgent at this point. And how do your parents <laughs> keep it trapped? We don't know. They just tell us that they keep it trapped down there. Can you do insight, see if it's... He's like, he doesn't understand how or why. Yeah, Pitch is feeling a little bit weirded up as well. Yeah, this go for it. This sounds like a lie that parents use to like get the kids to eat their vegetables or something. Hmm. Oh, we've got a monster trapped in the basement and if you don't eat your green. <laughs> Anyone else rolling insight? Is it just us, Dredd? Uh, I think no, Pitch, but... Pitch would as well. I would roll mine too, please. Yep, that's fine, George. No. Go ahead. Fair, fair as not, but she's going to say um, just check them over for bites, perhaps. Um, Rose, Thorn, were you hurt at all as you... No, we, we just... We ran out here because the noise has just got louder. Okay. Why didn't you go to a town? Why were you waiting on the road? Thorn ran out here and I, I chased him after him. He was he was really upset. Looks down at the kid. I'll say with that insight check, Ostrid. So uh, Pitch and Helen, you don't get any really sense of anything, but Ostrid, you get um, you get a sense that they're, they're being truthful with you as far as you know. Um, the the situation, they, it sounds from what you can tell that this is what their parents have told them, and they're kind of just parroting what they've heard they've not they don't know for certain they but they don't seem to be lying to you from what you can tell mm. you just yeah he's just Austria. i'm just i don't understand how their parents can keep a monster trapped in a basement nor do i but if there is a baby trapped in that house with a monster we kendall would want us to head there right now yeah, yeah, what are you all waiting for? You've got to go yeah. and deal with it. Farrah's slightly walking, expecting people to follow. I think yeah. we should deal with this quickly. At this point, as Farrah, you start walking ahead, the mist around you begins to pour in behind you, immediately oh. starts coming in, consuming around you. I shall cut to the next map quickly. Uh, Ostrad wants. He looks at the kids again. He's like, "Where are you gonna go? You're gonna stay out here or go to the town?" Before you even have a chance to say that, Ostrad, the mist just consumes their forms, and that you—they're just—it's so blinding that you can't even see them. Rose, Thorn, Page, Page calls out. You can barely hear muffled noises from the mist itself, but it, it's completely surrounding and blocking out most sound. Ahead of you, you can still see the, the house. Is Are any of you remaining still within the mist or not? No, I was dreading to retreat no. the house. Can any... Farrah see the group still, or is they not? A bear, like you can. Um, between you and Farrah, there is still the mist. The mist is sort of catching up the last people at this point who are standing closest okay. to Rose and Thorn, so I assume Pitch and yep. one Nigel. Um, Pitch and Nigel, would you? I think you would be consumed by the mist at this point. Um, can you yep. both please make me constitution saving throws? Oh, damn. Oh, no, we're going to die. Uh -oh. I was going to say, Neville would have been close to the kids as well. Cause... And Neville them. If anyone thinks they're close yeah. enough. To the kids? No. Okay. Oh. Those are, those are all fails, I'm afraid. Um, Shit. So you, each of you, suffer a point of exhaustion. Oh. oh. Uh -oh. You feel your energy just being sort of sucked out of you, almost, as this mist is pouring in now. What do you do? Is it is it from the kids? No, it's coming in from everywhere around. It's like coming from that direction. 
We need, need to get out of the mist. Uh, into the building, she shouts at everybody. From yeah, pitch further in the me. mist, you just hear building. screams and shouting and crying. But oh, it's shit. it's so obscured at this point, you can't see. Fuck. Yeah, Farah I mean, is heading towards the building. As far as Neville knew, he was like not too far away from the kids, so what if he then tried to walk in the direction that he could remember seeing them and them being there? You can certainly try if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, make another. We need to get out of make this another Constitution out. saving throw for me, Neville. Oh shit! <gasps> it's another fail. You take another point of exhaustion as you try and head further into the into the mist. It's just it, every step. It's like it's pushing against you, and you can't. It just it is draining all your energy every moment you spend in this mist. We have to go, Mister Daggerson. So impossibly they aren't where they should have been. You, you can't, no. Okay. You, you, you hear you hear screams and crying coming further in from the mist, as if they've maybe ran in further. But what the kids? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's he's gonna because he would have already so I imagined him more or less next to them so if he has suddenly taken a few steps forward and they're not there he's just confused, freaking out mm -hmm. he's gonna kind of just go the other direction go with the same way everyone else went I think Farrah is assuming that, the, I don't think Farrah's seen the kids run away so she's just Run into the building, assuming everyone's following. The the mist is pouring in further and further. As um, are you all running towards the house at this point? Yeah. It's the mist is now consuming every aspect, and it's almost like driving you towards the house. It seems the only place now that's not consumed by mist is the house itself, and the small area around it. Yeah, Fair is in the house. All your signs, all signs of the village beyond. All the buildings disappear into the mist. There's, you can't see anything beyond. What the fuck is this mist? Okay, and as you run towards the only bastion of safety that appears to be nearby, I'll take you to the next map. Nigel will will get him back. Don't worry. Ah, oh, safe at last. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, the the boy, he he kept his own uh, little man safe. He'll he'll keep. I tell you, it trap, Mister Snufflex, gone forever. He he's not gone forever. We'll we'll get him back. We gone forever, pitch. <laughs> oh my god! So sad. It's our first death, everyone. I'm genuinely correct. <laughs> I said take him back. Uh, oh, no, place yourself in the wrong place, Kieran. <laughs> oh. Let me put you on the map. Don't put yourselves on the map, please. I was going to say, if, if you could just ping Lewis. Ping yeah. Lewis. yeah, that's fine. Just I'll, I'll do it for you, because I know where you are. So. Yeah. Well, there I am. There's a room, guys. That's all I'm under. <laughs> My god, this house has rooms. <laughs> I've never been in a house with rooms before. <laughs> in this big open spaces. <laughs> Nigel, I promise you we'll get him back. I promise you. And with that, Nigel will give weak uh Pitch will give weak Nigel a bardic inspiration. Where am I meant to be going? Right, so um, so, Ed, Anya, lights don't forget. Or anything? What's There's that? two Nigels. Lights. Where's the second Nigel? I didn't see a second Nigel. Up here. Oh. Try not to drag yourselves on the map, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I thought that was what I was supposed no, to I, do. No, I did say. I, I'll don't, never do it. Yeah, just let me drag you onto the map, then once you're on the map, so you can control it. Okay, alright. Sorry, Lewis. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so, can um. You... I can forgive you, yes, it's fine. I've given you bark inspiration, Anya. Thank just in you. Just in case you need I... it. What does that mean? On an attack, 
ability check or saving throw in the next 10 minutes in game, um, you can roll an extra d6 on top of it. One time. You choose when it happens. Okay, so I think Farrah's in the building first. She was there first. I assume this is the doorway. Right, so yeah, you can see the gated portico is there. Bear me one second while I just set things up on my end. Um, Right. Has the mist stopped like swirling in now at mm -hmm. the edge of the like walls of yes, the it, garden it, or whatever? Exact, exactly, Tom. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, Pitch has turned around and looking at that. This is not anything natural. No. Anybody have any ideas what it could be? This is even worse than the mist before. I have no I idea. Is what it is. I feel tired. It Like it mm. sucked my energy out of me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, kind of dropped onto the floor a bit. Not good. Mr. Daggerson, you tried to look for the children. I'm impressed. Neville? Did oh Stefan die Neville. again? Hello? Sorry, Sorry, we can hear you now. Oh. Hi. Tom. Did you hear what I said? No, I didn't. What was that? I said, Mr. Daggerson, you went to look for the children. I'm impressed. Well, you know, they're, they're just kids. They're out here in the middle of nowhere. Can't take care of themselves, especially with monsters lurking about. Those not children. What makes you say that, Nigel? I think they part of trap to lure us in. Possibly. What do you mean? They're just kids. Who would we be heard... just kids for a trap? We, we heard them screaming in the mist. We, we trust things that look like child. Pharaoh's trying to get in this door, by the way. Yeah, the, the, there's a raw iron gate with hinges on one side and a lock on the other that fills the archway of what appears to be a storm po stone portico. Um, you push door and the gate is unlocked and it's... Uh, it's rusty hinges creak mm. as the door opens. Oil lamps. Um, have we lost our lights? Yeah, you will need. I need. Uh, so, what lights do you have? I said, did ask that. So, you let me know what uh, lights you have. Oh. Cast that thing again. I've got dancing lights again. Cool. What do you need to cast it again, or put it on just? Well, uh... mine's only ten minutes, so yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, what's yours, Mitt, Hannah? Uh, ten light and ten dim. Okay. Um, anyone else got any lights? Done that on Hannah. Dancing lights on Hitch. And torch for George. That was 20 foot on each, wasn't it? Yeah. It lasts for an hour. Has it been an hour yet? Um, it, it has been an hour, so I'll say you have to light another torch. Oh, yeah. And pitch is dancing lights. So I'll have to. If you want, to just copy them over. That's a great idea. I didn't even think of that. And it is four in total. Four in total. That's fine. I'll add another one for yeah. you. Yeah. I said three before because it's only. I was only doing it for Nigel, Neville, and Helen. But I'd like. Fine. I'd like my full four, please. That is no problem, sir. Bear with me. So I just quickly copy those. And yeah, pitch would have said to Nigel. Maybe you're right. I, this place is like nothing I've ever seen before. It does seem quite suspicious how a mist led it there. And yeah, something is bashing around. And it's, yeah, is on it? your mic. Oh, sorry, it shouldn't be. It's not doing anything. I think mm. it might have been on Kieran's, maybe not Anya's. It uh, might have been my maybe. head as I moved to be fair. not sure, I'm not, I don't know, I wasn't looking, but it's, 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 something was making a sound on your talk then, so. Yeah, can you control okay. those, Tom? Yep, I got them. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Or is that okay? No, Farrah's going to go in. Everybody, everybody prepare this. Obviously, there's a possible monster inside. In the basement, the children okay. said, though, if it was a trap. I suppose we can't trust what they say. Are you heading on inside? Yeah, let's go. Okay, bear with me. 
you push open the door, which is unlocked, which mm. leads She's... you to a small foyer. She's going foyer. cautiously, so should we do a stealth? Can do if you'd like, yeah. Do group stealth check then. You please. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I did Jesus. it for... Either way, it was the same. Yeah. Oh, wait, hang on. Doesn't it have zero. Yeah. effect? Oh, it does. Yeah, disadvantage on ability right. checks. Yeah, we've yeah. got to roll that again on you, because we've got exhaustion. Oh. What level? Level one or level two? You're on two, Stefan. Those the other two on level one. So your speed is half as well. Yeah, half speed. I've got the same both times, so... Oh, nice. Okay. And then, yeah, I've got some Pitch. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pitch is still on the 19. Okay. So, you feel. So, we got uh, one success, one, two success, one fail, two fails, three fails. Yeah. There's three success, three fails. So, it's pretty. You feel fairly, fairly hidden, but you, you know, just being as stealthy as you can be, basically. Um, everybody, everybody, follow. Stay close. Farah, as you head into um, the foyer, on this wall here on the side, hmm. um, uh, you see a shield emblazoned with a coat of arms, a stylized golden windmill on a red field, flanked by hmm. framed portraits of stony-faced aristocrats. And ahead of you, you see mahogany frame double doors that are set with a pa uh, panes of stained glass. Possibly a rich family lives here. Or lives one or the other. I'm just going to peek through the door if it's open. Okay, I think now you can push it and it does open. And it appears to be like a main Set. hall. Of a house. Mm, you step through. Okay. Inside, the first thing you notice is it's a very well kept um, house, uh, a wide hall that appears to run the width of the house, with a black marble fireplace on the end to the left, and um, a sweeping red marble staircase at the other. Mounted on the wall above the fireplace is a long sword, and it has a windmill mm. cameo worked into the hilt, which kind of matches the the shield you saw on your way in. Does anybody recognise these symbols? The sh the windmill. Pitch steps into the room. Bring Ready. some of the dancing lights in. Um. Would is there even a chance Pitch would recognise? No, none of you would recognise this. No. Doesn't seem familiar. What is this here? Is that a door? It's a door, yeah. I will say also, um, around the room, there is um, wood panelled walls, and each are ornately sculpted with images of vines, flowers, nymphs, and satyrs. What is this? All around the room. No, this. What is oh, that? that's the fire. That's the fireplace. Oh, okay, yeah. Can we see up the stairs at all as she looks up? Not anything? from here. It's curling round, so you'd have to mm. go up to be able to see. You can look straight upwards, and it appears to just go up about three floors. When Osra checks the fireplace, mm -hmm. are there embers, or does it look like it's been like that for a long time with nothing burning? Um, do an investigation check for me. Um, from what you can tell, it's not a hard DC, that um, it doesn't look like it's been burning at all. It hasn't been used in some so time. He, he points out to everyone, he's like, fire hasn't been on in weeks. I don't find it very believable that somewhere like this, it hasn't been. This main, it's the main house. Mm, particularly in the There's winter. About that. Can I never try and light fire? Yeah, if you'd like, yeah. Do you get out your tinder box? Tinder box. Yeah. yeah Have you got any, you got any wood? firewood? 
Well, what's in it? Is it an empty fireplace? Just burnt like embers that were once there, but no longer. Pretty much empty, yeah. There's, there's no wood left in there whatsoever. No. Looks like it's burnt oh. out. Oh. If you've got any wood or anything wooden, you can certainly chuck something in there. The children it said. Got any furniture in it? Well, can't even no... grab a bit of stairs. Wait, hold on, Stefan. What was that? This room has no furniture. No, it's comp oh. yeah, it's pretty much empty. Yeah. Okay, Not from no what I described. Bad idea. The children said the monster was in the basement below, and the baby was on the third floor upstairs. Um, Ostrid looks at Pitch. She's like, I don't believe there's any baby after what the family lies to. Which is the priority? I, well, if what Osdred says is true, that they're lying, then perhaps we shouldn't act on that information at all. Do we know for sure they were lying? Well, I don't understand how they were living here without a fireplace. True. That is true. Maybe we should eliminate the threat first, then. Yeah, but... There's just a little baby. You can't just leave them up there on their own. <laughs> tell, tell you what, I'll go, I'll go look for the kid. I'll go look for the sprog. You lot, you go deal with no. this monster. Fag, fag grabs Neville's collar. No, no. We are staying together. Okay, oh. you stay down here with us. And you we're going to go... Yep. Oh. Oh. Hey. He's at uh, and one at a time. Stefan was going to speak, so... Let's see what Stefan. I was going to say, Neville just kind of moves her hand off of him. She's like, get off. <laughs> <laughs> then... She doesn't let go. She pulls you back down off the stairs. <laughs> then, Kieran, what were you going to say? Ostrich just said to Farrah, you can't man manhandle him. He's that client. Yeah, Pitch is kind of nodding. Uh, well, Why if you want to let him go up there, then be my guest. And she <laughs> lets go and put, <laughs> like moves her hands out in a go on then gesture. We should go with Mr. Daggerson. He is our client. I thought that we were going to eliminate the threat first. I didn't believe that you thought there was a baby up there. I don't, but we should follow what Mr. Daggerson says. He's paying us. Farrah is thoroughly exacerbated. I don't need no escort. It's only a child. No, no. Because if they trap then they won't make us go for baby, so they make us go for, they say it's baby, but it's monster. Nigel is convinced the children trapped us in here. <clears throat> well, I, don't, I don't see any reason why they should, but... Oh, suppose a little kid on their own, you'd hear him crying down here, wouldn't you? Possibly. Unless it was asleep. I also don't believe that we're in the Sword Coast anymore. Which gives me extra pause for thought. Perhaps one door at a time. Turn off the nameplates because they are taking up quite a lot of space. If none of their story is true, then perhaps there's not even a monster in the basement. Uh, that is entirely possible too. Oh, Mr. Daggerson is our client. In any case, the mist doesn't seem to enter here, so there must be a reason. True. Ostred is right, though. What What would you want us... What would you have us do, Mr. Daggerson? You have hired us. Well, uh, I feel like you lot are fully equipped to deal with this threat downstairs, so you should do your best to get down there and deal with it, and looking after these kids shouldn't be a problem, then. All right, so then we look for somewhere leading down. Osdred, you could try the door in front of you. Good stay. At least one stay upstairs. Because basement, perfect trap for everybody. Locked in. So what are we doing, guys? Osdred's just going to barge this door down. Okay. You open the door... And uh, just quickly, get my notes up. Oh, as you as you open the door <laughs> to peer into the next room, you catch a, immediately catch a glimpse of something beyond. A piercing pair of amber eyes accompanied 
by a bestial muzzle curled up into a snarl. What do you do? Just gonna uh, smack it. <laughs> okay, roll an attack roll for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking smack it. Um, yeah. It's a reasonable, like, reflex. Nice. You swing and hit into this wolf's head and it just clatters it off and beneath you realise quickly that this is a taxidermy wolf. (laughs) (laughs) Now that that you've finished defeating the the fake wolves, Ostred, maybe we should try a different door. Inside Ostred, um, an an oak-panelled room that looks maybe like a hunter's den. Mounted above the fireplace is a stag's head, and positioned around the outskirts of the room are three stuffed wolves that you've seen before. Um, There's two padded chairs that are in front of the fireplace, draped in animal furs, um, with an oak table between them supporting a cask of wine. Two carved wooden goblets, a pipe rack, and a candelabrum. A chandelier hangs above the cloth-covered table, surrounded by four chairs. Two cabinets you stand against was... the walls, sorry. The east cabinets... Was... Sorry, go on. You said there was wine? There's wine on the uh, centre table between the two chairs. Yeah, fuck, he's going to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you open it up and you taste it. It tastes old. It tastes, But it's, it's drinkable. Mm. Yeah, he just downs it. He's feeling really shit. So. Okay, do a constitution saving throw for me then, please, if you're going to down it. <laughs> Trying to get some liquid courage. Pitch wants to see mm. how much damage Ostred's done to the taxidermy wolf up here. Uh, well, we'll say. Yep, you pass, no problem, Ostred. Uh, Pitch, yeah, do an investigation check for me. Yeah, you can see that he swinging in with his uh, war hammer. It just the 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 bludgeoning of it just uh, clattered the side, and it just it basically came loose from the top and. This thing was looks fairly well put together, but with the swing of Ostred's force, it, it's, it's pretty much wrecked it. Well, Ostred, were it alive, I'm sure it wouldn't have lasted long. It's a shame it wasn't a werewolf. Yeah, it would have been a good first hit. Um, is there any... <laughs> Sorry, any more? Yeah. Pitch just wants to do a quick scan, like he's sending the dancing lights around. Is it the same kind of wood panelling? Is it? Are there any of those crests, like the windmill crests again? No, there's not in here. And the wood panelling is notably different. It's like more what it might have been like a lighter colour out of here. It's more darker and an oak panelling um, with no hmm. particular um, symbols carved in the side. Looks like similar Fair. similar design, but not... Similar design of how the wooden panelling's put on there itself, but it's not. It's, it looks different colour and not with the engravings, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, on edge, and she steps out of the room. No sign of a basement next door, I suppose. Ostred, we need to keep moving. Is there any more wine on the table? You've drunk all of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell if you were speaking as Ostred or Kieran then. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Alright, where are we checking next, guys? The disappointment just sounded so genuine. Pitch is getting a bit All impatient. Right. He'll step to this door and try and open it. Okay. That door swings open. Neville's just, like, collapsed on the stairs. He's just naked. Yeah. If reeling inside what appears to be like a dining room at this distance. In the, the dancing light. As you send it in, do you do you you can see sort of chairs and stuff. You'd have to step into the room to see more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Directly. It looks like a dining room, and I'll step in. Yeah. So immediately as you head in, the centerpiece of this, and again a wood panelled room, um, that are clearly a dining room is a large carved mahogany table surrounded by eight high back chairs with sculpted armrests and cushioned seats. A crystal chandelier hangs above the table, which is covered with resplendent silverware and crystalware polished to a dazzling shine. 
mounted above um, the marble fireplace to your left is a mahogany frame painting of an alpine veil. Hmm. The wall panelling, once again carved with elegant images, but this time of deers among the trees. Um, red silk drapes cover the windows, and um, also red silk drapes seem to hang from what possibly is a, a tapestry beyond it, but you can't see because they're currently covering it. Farah peers in, but is uninterested, so just steps away. Pitch goes over to the tapestry. That's covered up. Yep. And tries to look behind the covering. Okay. Yeah, you easily pull it aside, and it's on like a curtain rail. And the tapestry depicts hunting dogs and horse-mounted aristocrats chasing after a wolf that hang. And uh, yeah, chasing after a wolf. Okay. Is there anything on the table? There's um, silverware and cutlery. Um, that looks really resplendent and it's polished to a, a really dazzling shine. But apart from that, there's no food or anything. It's just Shit. no wine on thread. <laughs> Pitch comes back out of this door over here, or goes to open this door. Yeah, the other that's side. fine. Bear me one second. Opens back out into the hall. You just a uh, dining room. Indeed. We should try and find the kitchen. Open it up, Astrid. What? Why are we finding the kitchen? Which door are you opening up? Um, one straight. The way. Um, yeah. One straight <laughs> in front of you. Okay. Inside, oh. you see a small closet. Um, inside, you can see a number of um, black cloaks hanging from hood hooks on the wall. And on the top, you just about make out a top hat that sits on a high shelf. Um, he's going to reach up for the top hat. Mm -hmm. You can just about reach it at your height. And um, he, he turns to pitch. He's like, do you think that Nigel will like this? I think he potentially would love it. Nigel! Yes? That me? Ostred's found something for you. <laughs> Present. Present, yes. Yeah, he <laughs> and he like balances it on his massive head. It <laughs> doesn't fit, and it's sort of like sliding backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> love it. Well, we have one more door. Are you heading in? Nigel, could you do the honors? Yes. Open door. Where, where that one? Here. No, the, the one up here. Oh. That you were just next to. Oh. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes. So looking beyond, appears to be a kitchen. Um, it's tidy. There, you can see dishware, cookware, and utensils that are neatly placed on shelves around the room. A work that... table has a cutting board and a rolling pin atop it on the right of the room. And in the centre, you can see a stone dome-shaped oven that stands near the top wall. Its bent iron stovepipe is connecting to a hole in the sieveling. And behind the stove um, and to the left is a thin door leading to a, a room beyond. Farah's going to pick up pick up the knife. Okay. Nigel's going to pocket the rolling pin. <laughs> Feel free to add a simple kitchen knife and a rolling pin to your inventory. Are there any cupboards? Not that you can see, just shelving units on this side that have all the cutlery and stuff, and no no cupboards beyond that. No food. Not from what you can see in this room. There is a door up here, though. Oh, By which you mean no yeah. wine. Could be a pantry. Ooh. I'll go in. <laughs> all right, Ostred. You open it up, and immediately you can see that it is a pantry, Ostred. Um, it's filled with um, food, and there's a few there's a few little um, bits of wine in there, but mostly food. How much wine? Probably about two <laughs> bottles. <laughs> two bottles, Jeez. right? Sweet. I like that to my inventory. <laughs> Looking at the food, Ostrich, you, it seems very fresh. <laughs> you can tell. Any sign of a basement, Ostrich? Ostrich? No, but the. Um... 
the, the food in here is fresh, so maybe someone was living here after all. So now we think the children may have been telling the truth. Who knows? No. All right, well. Nigel, I know how you feel. There is a door here. I would say it's a smaller door, you'd notice, and it's kind of like raised up, and it's sort of closed, uh. and it sort of pulls down and pulls up. Um, mm. Opening it, um, you can see that it appears to be like a dumb waiter. Hmm. Okay. No basement anywhere. Pharaoh's gonna inspect the fireplace. Do an investigation check for me. You'll hear the music all right, by the way. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Cool. It's, yeah, it's creepy. Um, 13. There's, what, what are you looking for? I don't know, see if it leads to the basement. Doesn't Any look. secret, no, it's secret just, thing? No, it seems like it's just a hollowed out pit. Um, seems to, if you look up, it connects to a very small chimney. Um, but it doesn't lead to, doesn't seem to lead anywhere okay. in particular. Just seems like a fireplace. Okay. Pitch wants to quickly pull back one of the curtains by the windows and just see if the mist is still like thick outside. Yeah, and you look out, and it's still completely surrounding this place. Well, uh, Mr. Daggerson, perhaps upstairs is the way for us to go. What? Um, Have you looked around everywhere then? No way down. No if basement. They, we can see. If they had, a, if they had a secret basement, I mean, if they had a werewolf in the basement, they would keep it hidden. I'm sure. Yes, I, I can't imagine a bit. If there's no obvious way down into the basement. How did the werewolf get into the basement? Well, mm. we could ransack the entire floor, but I figure perhaps upstairs is the first port of call. And at that, I mean, Ostrad pulls out his more, but as Pitch continues going on, he, he slowly puts it away. <laughs> puts what away? Cut out for me for a sec there. His maul. His maul, nice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Farah? Well, I mean, if there's a baby up there, I suppose you should go have a look as well. All the time we've been down here, have we heard any howls, cries, or anything like that? Nope. If you think they were telling the truth, then we might as well go have a look, I guess. We can't find the way down. Alright. Pharaoh's going up the stairs. Wait, yeah. which way is up? That way? That way? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, Tom's right. So, get upstairs. Let me just quickly drag you across then. Oh, bear with me. Things oh, being weird. Are you coming with us, Mr. Daggerson? Begrudgingly, as he was just getting comfy in the chair. <laughs> Is anyone else following Farrah up, or Pitch? Pitch will offer like his shoulder <laughs> yeah. to lean on, but Neville. Helen's following up as well. I Neville wouldn't take it. Okay. Ooh. No, it's just uh, yeah. Up. Pitch, Pitch is following up as well. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. And Nigel, I assume as well. Oh, Can you give me my dancing lights across, indeed. please? Whee! I love my little blobs. Yo, blobs. Yo, yo. Right. My little children. So... Oh. Um, this appears... There's unlit oil lamps mounted on the walls of what appears to be this elegant hall. Hanging above the mantelpiece is a wood-framed portrait of a family. You see a father, mm -hmm. a mother, and two smiling children that are immediately um, recognisable to you as Rose and Thorn. Cradled in the father's arms is a swaddled baby um, who's got the highest passive perceptions, uh, Farrah, isn't it? Yeah. Farrah, you would, you would notice that you look at the, the painting and um, you think to yourself that the mother kind of Seems to regard the baby with a with a hint of scorn. Mm. Standing, no, sorry, point go it on. out. No, I said just as you point it out. In the room as well, standing are uh, suits of armor, flanked, uh, flanking the wooden doors in the top and below you. 
Each suit of armour clutches a spear and has a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. The doors are carved with dancing youths. Hmm. I don't Petron's think this is a particularly happy family. What was that? I just oh. said that it doesn't seem like a happy family. Yeah. And oh, what I was going to say was Pitch wanted to check to see if the lamps had oil in them. They do not. Well, we find ourselves in a similar position. Do we want to start checking doors? Should we start on the right? Okay. You open this door. Beyond appears to be a library with red velvet drapes covering the windows of this room. An exquisite mahogany desk and a matching high back chair face the entrance and the fireplace, above which hangs a framed picture of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag, similar to one you saw on the shield below. Situated in the corners of the room are two overstuffed chairs and floor-to-ceiling bookshelves line the walls. A rolling wooden ladder allows one to more easily reach high shelves. Farrah's going to inspect the disc. Okay. Do an investigation check for me then, please. <clears throat> Mr. Daggerson, there are chairs in here if you wish to sit again. Okay. Oh. On top of the desk, you can see uh, several items resting atop it, Farrah. An oil lamp, a jar of ink, a quill pen, a tinder box, a letter kit containing a red wax candle, four blank sheets of parchment, and a wooden seal bearing a family insignia that resembles a windmill. You search through the desk drawers after, and each seemed mostly empty, except for one on the top left, which is empty except for an iron key. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. She's going to take the key. And she's also going to take anything useful on the table, which you can remind me of later. Yeah, like I said, you can take an oil lamp, you can take a jar of ink, a quill pen, a tinder box, a letter kit. Uh, okay, blank I mean, piece remind of me of that later. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to forget. If you, yeah, ask me when you want to add it, and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy yeah. to do that. You could always borrow my kit if you need it to write, Farah. Uh, and is, is it no better if we have more than what we need? I suppose. I feel sorry for the family if they are around, though. We're stealing from them. True. If uh, if they if there's a werewolf about, I'm sure that they wouldn't have left their kids alone. Though. Yeah, it seems unlikely. Do you see anything useful, Ostred, down that space? Yeah, Ostred was going to just run, you know, like do a cursory look at the books, see if there's any common theme among them. Yeah. Um, looking at the books, Ostred. <clears throat> You can see hundreds of tomes that cover a range of topics, including history, warfare, and alchemy. Um, there are also several shelves containing first edition collected works of poetry and fiction. Seeing from a letter, it mentioned Barovia. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at anything that says anything more about Barovia. Takes you, do an investigation check. Smart man. Sometimes I can. <laughs> yeah, looking along the bookshelves, you can um, you see a number of history books. Um, one that does seem to indicate some history of Barovia. Mm -hmm. um, does it hint where it is? Um, it talks about it being. Um, it doesn't hint specifically. No, it more talks about the Valley of Barovia. Um, it talks about um, Mount Balanok, the mountains nearby. Um, it doesn't talk much beyond that from just your cursory glance. He's going to pocket the book. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Is there any wood in this fireplace? No, it is it's empty as well. He's, he looks at Pitch and he's like, I've uh, found this book on Barovia. I didn't recognize any of the geographical features that it talks about. Could it be a faraway place over the seas? Possibly. There's... But then how would we be here 
now. Well, he points in the book. Apparently we are. All right. Um, well, one thing at a time, I suppose. Go on, Stefan. Can I have Neville look through the, can I have Neville look through the books as well? Yeah, do a perception check for me, Neville. You look through the book. In fact, roll with advantage for me because Austrid has already kind of looked through. So, okay. I mean, bearing in mind what it is I'm looking for. Okay. Well, it would also it would be with disadvantage anyway because of yes. exhaustion. So it levels out. So it levels out. So it would just be the twelve then. Um. um on what are you looking he's for? Looking for the most boring, standard, replaceable book in there. Um. You sort of run your fingers. Along the, along the wall, along the books, just, and um, you, you look, at, you look through, and some of them, like I said, they're just loads of topics, including history, war, and alchemy. Eventually, you get to a red-covered book with a blank spine that looks pretty, looks pretty boring. Yeah, nothing in it. Do you take it? Come along. Oh yeah. As you pull <laughs> it from the bookshelf. You hear a click. <laughs> As you realise, and then suddenly the the bookshelf beyond you swings outwards, and you realise the the bookshelf it's the, the the book you took itself is not is not part of the not an actual book, and the oh, revealing what appears to be a room beyond. Oh god, Ostrid would have seen it. You can see that all as well. <laughs> Do you look? Okay, I can't see anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, Neville just calls out. Uh, uh, fellows! <laughs> Mr. Daggerson. What happened? Uh, there's a door. A door? Oh. Yeah. It was behind this book. Well found. Uh, yeah, uh, it comes natural, you know. <laughs> Inside Neville, you see a room that contains more bookshelves packed with more tomes um, that you can't, you could look through if you'd like to. Also, beyond, you see a heavy wooden chest with clawed iron feet that stands against the wall. The lid is half closed, and sticking out of the chest is a skeleton in leather armour. A human skeleton. Neville just grabs the next book that looks pretty, pretty rubbish. All of these tomes. Um, do an investigation check for me, actually, with disadvantage because you're yeah. exhausted. But yeah, these tomes. You kind of look grabbing them and just kind of oh, just looking. And the thing that most bots you sort of immediately is they look to be kind of quite maybe like religious maybe you're not 100 percent sure mm. if you like you can try and determine what they are with an arcana check again at disadvantage nah i never wouldn't yeah on that. that's what i thought so i didn't mention it didn't you say there was a book on uh history those were in the main things yeah there's plenty of books on history warfare alchemy stuff like that let's take the Warfare one. Yeah, you see. I think I have got a blimmin book table. Hold on, where is it? I should have fucking put this in my thing. Mr. Daggerson, what do you see in the room? I, I don't know. You go check it out. Alright. Uh, I can't uh, find it right now, so I'll do that later. Faro, Oster. Well. Oath, Iron Oath, there is a skeleton in here. Let's have a look. Sends in the dancing light to hover above it. Um, so uh, inside you, you can see the, um, you can see the uh, insides as I described before, um, Pitch. Yeah. Um, but then one thing that notices stands out to you that didn't really spot Neville straight away 
you look more closely at the skeleton and you can see it's clutching what appears to be an unopened letter in one of its Another hands. Another letter. I seem to be finding a few of those. Is that a chest behind them? It is, yeah. And he sort of he's almost like he's almost like fallen into it and is like half sticking out of the chest. Pitch will reach down for the letter and attempt to take it. Okay, yeah, you can do that, no problem. Um, maybe, the most... maybe worth seeing what he was trying to get to, Pitch. Yes. The chest behind. Should we drag him out first? Um, yeah. What were you doing Pitch before, the... Neville? Because you did see you oh. were speaking before. I was just going to say, he's going to, so he's taking this book of warfare and he's going to start tearing the pages out. And yep. the yeah, felt that coming. Yeah, thought so. <laughs> Good old fashioned book burning. Yeah, you can do that, no problem. What were you going to say, Pitch? Uh, that with the letter, Pitch would step out of the room to okay. get some space to like read it, but yeah. he'd leave the dancing light in there. The and first... just say to Farah, go on. Just say to Farah, if you want to drag him out, go for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Farrah's going to drag the body out and tell Osdrid. Osdrid, do you want to check the chest? Maybe he was after something. There must be a reason he died in here. She drags it out. Yep, you can drag the, the body out, no problem. Yeah. Right, so first we'll go to, to Osdrid. Osdrid, if you want to inspect the chest, you're more than welcome to. He doesn't want it. You don't There's want... a dead body next to it. Uh, Farrah did just drag the dead body out. No, I mean, he doesn't want to because there's a dead body yeah, next to it. That's perfectly reasonable. Yep. So he just steps back. Okay, but would he tell her that? <laughs> no, he's just like. What was in the chest, Ostrid? I don't know. What? What? <laughs> Well, I'm not going in a chest where there's a dead body who's seemingly killed by a chest. I mean, maybe. How could he be killed by a chest? Well, how did he die in that room? I don't know. Well, we this house has know. many mysteries. He just pulls out his maul and he just runs in. He fucking smashes the chest with the maul. <laughs> okay, you smack, you you hit into the chest and it just breaks open um, almost immediately, and a bunch of different um, scrolls fall out. Um, you end up because of the way the, the way you smash down, you end up tearing one in in half, um, damaging it, and it almost like it almost like a a magical kind of seam just sort of flickers for a second before it sort of like just evaporates um, for a second. Um, can you roll a d6 for me, please, Kieran, to see which one you lost? Four, okay. Um, two other scrolls that fall out, another round of documents fall out. Um, that's about it. It just looks like documents. Um. Do you want to take a look at them or not? He goes out. It's like I open a chest. And um, did you did you find anything? I'm not interested in it. Um, uh, pitch. Maybe you want to have a look. Yeah, pitch rolls his eyes. Although I now realise that no one would ever be able to tell that mm. pitch is rolling his eyes because they're yeah. pitch black. Yeah. <laughs> I will say before that happens, pitch. Um, whilst you are oh yeah, the letter out there. The, letter. the first thing you notice on the letter is a wax seal that it looks like this. Whoa. It's of a raven that's covering a. Uh, like on the gate on the on, way in. Like on the gate, exactly. Mm. Letter in hand. I assume none of us know what it means. You don't recognise it. The um, I will say the castle at the top looks familiar to you. The one you saw hanging over the cliff over the village before mm. you, or when you were on the gravel road before you saw Rose and Thorn. Did you open the letter? Yep. Okay. Bear me one second. I will break the seal. You break the seal and open the letter. Um, 
Let's do big check something. Helen, maybe you could check what Ostred found in the chest. Oops, did not mean to do that. Uh, hmm. Where is the chest? Top right. Right you are. Oh, for fuck's sake. There you go. Oh, oh it, there's a secret door here. Secret door. Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, there you go. You should be able to see it now? I can, yeah. Jesus. <clears throat> Can I look in the chest, please, Dennis? Yep, I'll let Tom read this first, and then we'll cut to you. My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah that has been sent to you. I have not come to lead you on a path to immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms writhing in my earth. You say that you are cursed, your fortune spent. You abandoned love for madness, took solace in the bosom of another woman, and sired a bastard son. Save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Strad von Zarovich. Sounds like the Strad's got an ego. <clears throat> Did anyone so else we say anything? assume that Sorry. the man, the skeleton, is the pathetic servant? That sounds like it. Or not, the letter hadn't been opened. Perhaps a messenger? Mm -hmm. That is possible. Well, I don't know what it means to us. I will say one thing you notice know, again about the skeleton, I don't know if I mentioned it before, that it is wearing leather armour. Mm -hmm. You did say. Um, Neville, would you like this leather, leather armour? Ah, what for? Well, for protection. What, off a dead man? What's wrong with you? Well, <laughs> that is perfectly decent. Yeah, well, other than um, it was on a dead man. I mean, it's this armour. I mean, he doesn't need it. No, I mean, do I? Well, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. We'll cut to <laughs> Helen. Helen, you see a smash chest that... You heard Osdred um, appearing from the room moments earlier. Inside you find two scrolls um, and a number of other documents. Um, the scrolls, if you'd like to do an arcana check for me, you can see if you recognise what they are. Yes, I'll do that. So the first, mm. first one you don't really recognise, you can do another one for the second one. The second one, you can kind of make out the the, the things a bit more in it. The first one, you you were not familiar with at all, but the second one um, appears to be a scroll of spiritual weapon. You're a bit more familiar with the combat nature of some clerics that cast the spell that you learnt about at your the academy mm -hmm. you learnt at, at, um, when you became a monk. That's pretty cool. Looking through the... Back. Yeah, sorry. Looking through the, the different documents... You notice that you can tell that one is what appears to be the deed to this house, um, and also what appears to be a deed to a windmill and a signed will. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You would, you would see that the will is signed with the names Gustav and Elizabeth the Durst, hmm. and it bequeaths the house the windmill, and all other family property to Rosavalda and Thornbolt Durst in the event of their parents' deaths. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I'm going to come out and relate some of this to the guys. Okay. So guys, look, I found a will and all this stuff. Um, something about the children, leaving everything to them. So maybe they're real good children. You never know. It certainly makes this sound like this was their house. Certainly. So why, how, why do we think... Now, Nigel? Go on, Stefan, you go oh. first and then... So I was going to say, how do you feel about all this now, Nigel? Uh, still got bad feeling about this. Mm. 
Maybe oh, they the scrolls if anyone wants one. One seems a combat one, one something else. I don't really know. Um, Farrell will take a look at the one he doesn't know. Yeah, do an arcana check for me. Yeah, you can see that this is a scroll of bless. Mm. This is a scroll of bless, if anybody can use this. Horse Dread uh, puts his hand out and he's like, I'm sure Duma Foyne would be willing. Yeah, she hands it to him. Father, you said the family did not look happy. Indeed. Um, the, le the letter mentions a bastard son. That must be the baby. Um, in the image outside this room, uh, the painting uh, depicts the mother looking down on this baby with kind of a hatred in her eyes. So that's what I love that the painter would have made sure to include that. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> the, the most pathetic servant would be the man of the house then. Helen, does it say on the will the man's name? Uh, Gustav? Gustav. Mm. Um, okay. Ostrid, perhaps you can determine how this man died? And she points to the body. Okay. Do a, med <clears throat> do a medicine check for me, Ostrid. Yeah. What's that clicking? Can anyone else hear that? There's a yeah, ticking, the ticking clock. Yeah. Also, try and remember for anyone who's got disadvantage on rolls to for their exhaustion. So I think it's, I'll just yeah. put a little symbol on because I'm forgetting. Uh, let's do that one. Neville's got two. Oh, don't know why that. Del oh wait, I have to do. I'll do two different ones for Neville. And uh, who's on the? Who else had it? It was with Nigel, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So if you'd like to. Um, eleven medicine check. Yeah, looking at the um, the body, um, Australia. It doesn't take you long. Um, that on closer inspection reveals that the the skeleton obviously belongs to a human, and um, you can see that this human appears to be like an adventurer, from what you can tell, just of the armor and the sort of what he's got strapped on him. Um, you can see that in his neck. There are three darts. That are st there's one dart stuck in there, and there's another one stuck in his armor and rib cage. As a skeleton. Mm-hmm. Fuck. That's a hefty dart penetration. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um. It looks like he was killed by some sort of dart. Um. Interesting. A dart could penetrate that deep. Yes, straight into the bone. It's quite chilling. We well, need to watch out for booby trap. Yes, good thinking, Nigel. That's a good idea. The next room, I suppose. Indeed. I have this key I found in this drawer. Perhaps that will help us. If we find a locked door, certainly. Indeed. Let me know if you find anything of importance. <laughs> <laughs> DM, mm -hmm. would you say it's been more than 10 minutes? Yes. Then, yeah, the bardic inspiration's gone from Nigel. Okay. Oh, damn. I've got more, don't worry. Yeah, Pharaoh recasts so flame. That's fine. Us. I'm assuming you're keeping any cantrips lit up. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's not an issue. Yeah, Pitch will leave two dancing lights in here for, for <laughs> Neville. Can Neville. <laughs> We're researching now. There's yes, a... please, um, Nigel, if you would like to go first. There's a door at the top of the stairs as well. I'm not sure if you guys can see it very clearly, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a door down well, to the uh, south. Oh, that one, yeah. Wait, this I'm. This one, where... Nigel. D oh, sorry. I doubled those. That's all right. Right. So, all right. Nigel, you push open the doors. Uh... And inside, you see. As you enter, you can see gossamer drapes cover the windows of this elegantly appointed hall, which has a brass-plated chandelier hanging from the ceiling. 
upholstered chairs line the walls and stained glass wall hangings depict beautiful men, women and children singing and playing instruments. A harpsichord with a bench rests in the northwest corner and near the fireplace is a large standing harp. Alabaster figures of well-dressed dancers adorn the mantelpiece. You will also, as you enter the room, you hear a sound. Mm. If you can hear that, it might be too quiet. I did hear that. I did hear that, yeah. It sounded like a dog whimpering or something. And it's coming from here, Nigel. It almost sounds like giggling. Oh, God. Gonna inspect behind the curtain. I'm assuming it's behind the curtain. The sound's coming from underneath the harpsichord. Nigel sits down on the on the seat and then leans down to look underneath the, the harpsichord. Looking underneath, suddenly you see... A dog. Yeah. That is sit uh, hiding beneath the oh. harpsichord. It, oh, it kind look of, at his face. It kind of looks up Farrah. at you, looking scared. Can Farrah see it? Yep, yeah, you can. At this point, I think. I mean, Pete. Farrah, Farrah dashes out the door. <laughs> um, Nigel's gonna take a bit of the chicken out of his hair and. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's definitely still there. <laughs> Love it. And he's gonna sort of like. Hey boy, hey, hey. The do a persuasion check for me. Don't touch it, Nigel. It's disadvantage. Feral. With disadvantage, yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. The dog sort of slowly comes forward, and it just sort of takes the chicken from your your hand, and then just starts licking it up, just like. Uh, but then it kind of backs away again. Pitch goes to stand kind of protectively in front of Farrah. Yeah, she's just kind of breathing heavily outside the door. <clears throat> Nigel's very tempted to play the harpsichord. <laughs> Does he have a name, Nigel? A collar? Anything? Uh, I mean, DM... Ca- can yeah, you look yeah, you the... can. You look down. You you take. You grab. He is wearing a collar, and you grab it. And there's a little engraving on the front, with like a little hanging bit. And um, the collar says Lancelot. Oh, his name Lancelot. Pitch. The dog, That's a great name. The dog kind of looks at you, Nigel, and starts kind of whining towards you again. Um. Nigel puts his hand out and sort of waits for the dog to come and sniff his hand before he goes to pet him. He sniffs it and then he starts licking your hand. That's because it smells like chicken! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nigel's going to give him some pets. Yeah, he quite happily accepts them. Seems quite friendly. Ostrid looks at the harp and he turns back to the pitch. He's like, why don't you try and give it a play? I... I could try. I have not trained with a harp before. Well, it's easy, isn't it? A, B, C, D, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Astrid, it's easy. Pharaoh's confused. Is this the time for music? And she sort of steps back even more. Pitch will just, he's not going to sit down and try and play, but he just kind of like runs his fingers across it just to get a brrrr yeah, across there. Yeah, do that. Uh-huh. N- Nigel goes, eh, do it! And starts. Dun, 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 dun. Um, Lewis, yeah. you know, with um, Nigel's backstory, would I'm assuming he might well be able to rudimentarily play. Yeah, yeah I'll allow that. That's fine. So he'll sort of like pick out He's not super out a talented, little... but he can, he's... he's... It's possible. Yeah, P- Pitch couldn't resist that from Nigel. Even with everything that's going on, he would play a little bit as well, or try to. He doesn't have a proficiency with a harp, so. But um, um, he could probably pick out like a very basic, duh, 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 like a basic tune. Do you want me to play the duet with Nigel? Because I can. No, no. <laughs> no. Okay. So yeah, you you 
<laughs> you play a pretty rudimentary song amongst you, and it's just kind of the dog is just kind of sitting and putting his head on your lap, Nigel, and kind of whining more. Take it, I want the dog. <laughs> Pitch finishes and wanders dog. over. You have made a friend, Nigel. I need all the friends I can get. I wonder why he was hiding under the harpsichord. You, you know, boy, what? Why are you hiding? Just looks at you. you. Up from the dog. Dogs can't talk, can you? Well, you might be surprised. Pitch walks out. Farah. She looks at you. I yes. don't suppose you have the ability to speak to animals? Uh, you know I do, Pitch. Uh, I don't really want to talk to the dog. I, I know. It might help us here, but if you cannot, then that's that. It will... Uh, she's super reluctant. Yeah. It'll take it'll take me ten minutes to speak with this animal, and I don't think we have the time. And I can't say I really want to talk to it, but uh, okay, that is if fair. we if we have to. Uh, inspiration, by the way, Hannah. Really good role playing with the fear. I already ha I already have inspiration, but yeah. You should. Oh, yeah. But... <laughs> Double inspiration. Oh, do I give you one in session zero? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you did, yeah. Well, you get another point of inspiration. <laughs> Whatever. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps just the door for now. Yeah, let's try the door. You can bring. She like hesitant, hesitantly says it, but you could bring the dog. Just keep it far away from. Ah, uh, he's happy with Nigel for now. Until we are under threat, we can <laughs> go as. Okay. What's this? Yeah, let's just open this door. Door opens, it's not completely unlocked, and um, inside is a undecorated bedroom that contains a pair of beds with um, straw stuffed mattresses. At the foot of each bed is a footlocker. Yeah, and there seems to the be footlockers. a closet on the on the left is when you come in as well. Um looking in the footlockers, they're both unlocked and they're both empty. Hmm. I'm just gonna check the thingy, whatever it was. Uh, opening that, you can see it is a dumbbell. Uh, the next sort of section of it, um, much like the one below, I forgot to mention before. But on the wall next to it is a is a small bell. Hmm. Okay. What is this in the middle? Uh, it's just the the way the wall is designed. Okay. Probably it's the children's bedroom. bedroom. It's quite bland to be a children's bedroom, don't you think? There's two beds. There's two children. I'm wondering mm. if servants, perhaps. Yeah. Opening the um, closet door, um, you can you can see that um, there are, after Pitch says that, uh, with unusually good timing, that there are <laughs> what appears to be like maids' outfits hanging from the walls, from hooks in the closet. Mm. Indeed. There is um well, you will you would notice there is only one though. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And looking at the beds, you would notice that one bed seems to be more used, and one sort of bed seems to be perfectly made, as if it hasn't been used. Nigel. Uh, yes. If we have to take Lancelot with us, which would be yes. nice, you must make sure to keep him away from Farah. Um, I have idea, and he walks over to the hearth and like breaks one of the strings off, <laughs> and then <laughs> collar as like a makeshift lead. Do a dexterity check for me. It's not hide and see, oh, but God. pitch would help. Yeah, with the with a regular roll then, because it's you got disadvantage. There it is. That's twenty. Hey. Yeah, easily Ooh. you manage to pull with your strength off one of these harpsichord things, and using pitch as guiding you, you, kind of like just loop it around the the collar and sort of tie it, and then yeah, you can hold it as a makeshift lead. Can so I? I'm thinking, Nigel. 
I come, I come with you. Of course, you're always okay. with us. Just, uh, yeah, keep him close, away from Fada. Yeah, yes, Pitch. <gasps> Does this mean this is uh, like Kiba in the last one? I've yeah. got a dog now. You're not a beastmaster, so no. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> but you can hang out. Oh. Okay. Um, Farah points out that there's probably only one one servant in here. This bed is immaculate. I wonder what happened to the other. If we're going to try and get to the basement, maybe there's a secret compartment downstairs as well. There might be servants there. Or alternatively, we can ask the dog. Yes, well, there is a whole nother floor to explore first. We have not been assaulted so far. Ostrich looks up. Oh yes, I didn't see the other stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this... If the children were telling the truth. So what? I'm assuming in D&D, &D, mm -hmm. the floors are American floors. So it's first floor, second floor, third floor. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. it's not ground floor. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Fucking Americans. <clears throat> well, if the tr children are not lying, then the baby is on the next floor up. Farrah's gonna go first because she wants to avoid the dog. Yeah. Okay, I'll move Mr. you up. Mr. Dagerson, we are moving upstairs. Yeah, yeah, we are. Here's the baby. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Find anything interesting? A dog? Are you a dog man? Oh. Hello, hello there, puppy. How you doing? <laughs> no, no, he my dog. Of course, I'm not taking him. I'm just saying hello. Anyone else setting up? Yep, yeah, it should head up as well. Follow up last, Nigel. Oh no, I'm stuck on the wall. I'm still surprised. Wait. Neville, why have you come at such a weird angle? <laughs> he was in his chair. I'm assuming oh, you're still... like, bear with me one second while you all move around upstairs, because I'm assuming you're all on the stairs still as you go up. Oh, where the fuck did yeah. weak Nigel go? I have absolutely no idea. I was just moving him around the staircase and he has gone into the ether. I'll have to drag him back out. I don't know what the fuck happened to him then. Oh, there he just is. One more, one more dancing light. Yeah, bear with me, sorry. Oh, yeah, stop moving it! <laughs> ah, sorry! Oh. If you move in between floors, let me move you. Okay, alright. Oh, I will leave it alone now. Right, and Neville. Is Neville coming up, sorry, Steph? Yeah, for sure. Yep, okay. I'll be it slowly. Please. So, um, as you head up, in this room, who? what is the marching order up here? Farrah's up first. first. Okay, I'm assuming you're all on the stairs then, so let me move you around here whilst you're still on the stairs. Um, Pitch is next, I assume. Um, uh, I think it was Helen next, actually, or Helen? Ostrid. Okay. Ostrid would have gone at the back if they're going up in a marching order. Ostrid would have gone at the back. Yeah. There you go. Can um, Nigel just pick Neville up and, like, put him over his shoulder? If you want to, <laughs> he yeah. He can try, but Neville probably yeah. won't like it. Come on, man. No need walk. And just, like, picks him up and fire yeah, him and lift him. It will, like, pushes you off. Like, what are you doing? Unhand me. It does. I'm assuming it doesn't work because... No, do an athletics check versus an acrobatics check. Grapple check. He's very strong, Mr. Daggerson. It would make your life easier. So make a... Do, a, do an acro, a, athletics check with a disadvantage. Um, uh, Nigel and the same for Neville. Do a... Whichever you which one you want to do. 15, 15. versus 10. So yeah, but he's, he's grabbed onto you, Neville. You, you <laughs> can't break through. Get him. Neville Get him. starts kicking and, and, and wiggling, but quickly comes to a stop. I found when Nigel wants to give you a hug, Mr. Dagerson, there's really only one option. Nigel, like, smacks him on the bum over his shoulder and it's like... Stop moving! <laughs> so shall we I try the right? Of this. <laughs> I not care. <laughs> what did you say, Farrah? 
I said, shall we try the right? Yes. So, as you step into this room, I'm sorry, okay. um, you step onto this balcony. Um, you climb the red marble staircase and immediately you notice that the first two floors were pretty much immaculately kept, but this floor mm. is very dusty. Um, much less well kept. Um, mm. You see a suit of black plate armour standing against one wall that's draped in cobwebs. Uh, oil lamps are mounted on oak panelled walls, which are carved with woodland scenes of trees, falling leaves and tiny critters. Where are you about mm. to use stepping, um, Farah? There. Okay. You step next to the space of this armour and mm -hmm. suddenly you mm -hmm. hear this creaking sound as the armour you see Helen pitch, you can see before you, this armour seems to come to life <laughs> it's going to make an attack <laughs> against you oh shit bear with me while I get if that's a surprise attack it's advantage it is indeed uh Bear with me as I get this thing up. It's going to make two attacks but, against you uh, with advantage because it's got multi attack. Jeez. So the first one, uh, an 11 to hit. Is it me? No. Yeah. No, the first one miss. It. The second attack with advantage as well. Is a twenty-three to hit? <laughs> yeah, that hits. You take and a sixteen. Oh no, sorry, no, 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 I'm being stupid. Uh, so you take three points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, three. Oh. Would everyone please roll initiative? Yeah. No. no. I'm so happy. Twenty. What did it hit Pharaoh with? Just his arm? It's just or his was arm. Like a... Just swung into mm. his arm. Um, oh, Oops, I'll get rid of that. Alright, if you... Oh, let me get rid of the dancing lights. If you'd all like to enter your scores into the... Into oh, the I can't believe the dog's going to go above me. The name of the dog's interesting. Oh. Interesting, I should not have put that on there. <laughs> you do not know that. Roger that. Dog called animated armor. <laughs> yep. That's why I'm calling my dog. Um, so let me roll initiative for the animated armor. Not good. Five. Hmm. Okay, last. Uh, Neville, you still got to put yourself on. Hello. Sorry, what? Can you add yourself on the initiative? Your number, please. I can do. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and then descending. So, from the top, it is Farah, your go. Yep. Make Farah's just been. Make sure you've recorded your damage, by the way. by this thing, so she's gonna. Yeah, I did, yeah. Oh, did it not do it on the. Oh, I thought it did it on the thing. Weird. Oh. I don't know why okay. it's not done that, but yeah, just track them on both if you can. Okay. Um. So yeah, she's just gonna reaction. Well, not reaction, but yeah, like a physical reaction. She's gonna like chuck the flame at it. Okay. That she was holding, lighting up the place. Can't see turn order. Where's the turn order? Oh, whoops! I uh, dropped it by accident. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, she's gonna chuck the flame at it, which is. Okay, an 18 to hit. Whoops. Ha! I can do it myself. That's weird. An 18 will just hit. Hey! Jeez. <laughs> One damage! Wait. One point of fire damage to this creature. Okay. And she's gonna... Okay. No, she's gonna stay there, because 
Yeah. It would. I'm um, rules lawyering all over the place. It would actually be at disadvantage because it's a ranged spell attack. That's very true. So. Oh shit! Yeah, I'll well, just do it because I already rolled it. So. Tom, stop reminding Lewis about things that are disadvantaging us. No, this is my role. This is what I do. Um, thirteen would have missed. So. I don't yeah. know why I did two, but. I think you yeah. could double click it sometimes. I think that's sometimes when it goes through double. Um. So yeah, that does actually miss. So you did not do that damage. Okay. Thank That's you for right. reminding me, Tom. Damage. That's all right. Yeah, yeah thanks, just... Tom. You're welcome. Mm. Reading something. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, cool. So it is Neville's turn. Um, quick question. My D and D Beyond doesn't seem to be like connected to my roll twenty. For some reason, roll twenty says I have nine HP, but I actually have eight. And oh, it's I. To... I've um. Don't know why it's not. Let me quickly update your token. Like it works with you know all the rolls and stuff. But it's just yeah, I, I don't know why it's not doing that. Let me update your token. There you go. Try now. Should be eight HP on thing. If I need to adjust any HPs and roll I mean, twenty, I did make these tokens ages ago. So. Well, I mean, it's as in so when we were doing Tom's, it automatically updated it when you changed it on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's not. I have no idea why that worked in the first That's place. And... I'll do it manually. No. Is do you have eight? Do you have eight maximum HP then, or do you have nine maximum yeah, HP? Yeah, it's, it's gone, it's gone down to eight now. Yeah, but do you have eight total HP? Yeah, yeah. Eight out of eight, so okay, that's fine. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You're also on Nigel's shoulder currently. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> oh, he's grappled. <laughs> yeah, so he your movement like speed is says. your movement speed is currently zero because you're grappled. Yeah, he doesn't know what's going on, so he's not going to do anything. Okay, cool. Helen, it's your go. Wait, let's do an attack. Okay, make an attack. Yeah, use my short sword, please. Okay, make an attack with your short sword. Oh, you rolled damage, so if you want to roll the... Ah, oh, whoops. Click on the first part of it. And 18 will hit! So nice! Five points of damage to this thing. Nice. Oh, can I do a... Can I kick it as well? Oh, I don't... I can't remember how monks work, so you'll have to... You'll have to let me know. If you can yeah, kick so it. I get unarmed strike when I use attack action with a... Unarmed strike or monk weapon, I can make an unarmed strike as a bonus action. Well, feel free, yeah, make an unarmed strike as a bonus action then. Nice. Nice. Uh, that'll definitely hit. Roll for damage Gee. on your unarmed strike. Helen popping off. Mm. Oh, oh, that is big damage. Alright, yeah, looking, yeah. Got some nice hits in then. Nice. Uh, Watching Helen punch her suit of armor to death. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Does it have resistance? Yeah. And... It's not. It's like karate no. chops, though, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like whatcha? It's not resistant to any of them, as far as you can tell. So full damage went through. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So any movement, Helen, or anything else? Uh... Oh, I should have. Never mind. I just stay here. That's fine. Okay, it is. Go not get a go. No, the dog does not. It's a non-combatant. A uh, pitch. It's your go. Uh, pitch will move up. He wants to get in on the fun as well. He's gonna try and stab it with his rapier. Okay, with disadvantage. New. No. So it misses already, I'm afraid. So to see if you oh, get yeah, a natural it... one. The exhaustion's only disadvantage on ability checks. Oh yes, you're right, it's not attack check, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I had to check it. Um, and then with his bonus action... Hmm, he will say... He'll say to Farah... Um, You've got this, Farah. Strike it down. And that's Bardic Inspiration. I see you've got a Bardic cool. Inspiration die. I'll add a little, uh, a little yellow on you for that. 
Ooh, that's my turn. Cool. Ostrad. Hmm. I don't think he can actually get up to the armor. Shit. Okay. You could dash, maybe? No, but he'll move 25 feet up here. Yeah. If he's heard all that commotion. And he'll cast Sacred Flame on it. Okay, nice. Dexterity saving yeah. for, for the thingy. No Fail. fails. So, oh. roll your damage. Oh, no, that's good. Radiant damage. <laughs> One point of radiant damage. Doom of Thorn ain't feeling it. <laughs> so you see this bright light kind of emanate from the chest of this armor and just like you see a slight little crack maybe <laughs> but no still standing he's like do you find me with me <laughs> wait nigel you are carrying neville you can choose to drop him as a free action if you like um but um, otherwise you have halved movement whilst you're carrying him yes i would drop him the only thing is i can't actually see anything on the thing it's just a black screen and i can't move my token or anything i've refreshed the page and stuff but it's not oh, doing weird it's let stuck me stuck in the wall probably let oh. me try and drag you out and refresh you um, sorry it's all right oh yeah yeah yeah, can you yeah no. i'm gonna drop him and then <laughs> But... <laughs> <laughs> nope, just over the shoulder. Whoop. No, Down like the literally there. get you by the knee, behind the knees, and just go whoop. <laughs> um, and then I will stand in front of Helen, and I will take my Ooh. great act to it. By the way, Pitch, you wouldn't be able to end your turn there because you're in Helen's space. So what? You're in oh, Helen. Yeah, yeah. You're in Helen's space and you can't end your turn in someone else's space. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. 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 I can't see Helen. Helen's... Where is she? Oh, she's right there. What the fuck? That's super weird. I'll uh, <laughs> try deleting your token, Tom, and I'll add a new token on for you. I think she's one down from me on my screen because Nigel's on her right now for me. I'll yeah. move her around for you. She was where you were, so. Okay. Well, I would be where Nigel, Nigel is. is. One. Then it's fine. Okay, well... Weak Nigel will go here then. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh no, he's got to be with. Oh no, that is still five feet. Yeah, that's Sorry. Five feet, yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna swing my app, my great app. Yeah. Okay, making a oh, yeah. making a tap I, roll against it. Like, if I cut off the head, like the 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 helmet anyway. Yeah. Would that? So I'm gonna sort of like go for that kind okay, of thing. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Right. Oh shit! I think I just did the wrong thing. Sorry. I'll say you get. Ins you right I'll thing. say you get inspiration for that as well, Anya. I like that you're pointing out tactically Sweet. what you were going to go for. So you get inspiration for that. So if you wanted, you could re use it to re-roll that dice. Yes. Yes, please. Same roll. Oh, no. so, <laughs> unfortunately, it does miss. Oh, I need to add a Nigel back to the turn order because I did delete him. Uh, what was your uh, thing again, Anya? The your initiative number? Um, seven. 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 Oh, poor Nige. Right, uh, is that your turn? Yep. Okay, it's the armor's turn. I think it's going to focus in on Farah. That's the one it's attacked already. It's going yeah. to make another attack against you. So, it's going to make its first attack. 21, yep. a 7 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, 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 I'm down. And then it'll have the fact you've gone down, it will turn towards Helen, who made the second attack. Was it with the second attack? 14, Helen. Oh, misses. Okay. Oh, nice. Hey. Right, that is the animated armor's turn. Hit me. Farah, death saving throw, please. Oh shit. You can use your inspiration die if you need to. <laughs> oh yes, because I have so many. Because it's a saving throw. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, what am I doing again? How do I do it? On the, on the roll 20. Just roll a d20. Oh, okay. 
But it's a pass. Nice. Hey, don't even need the inspiration. Nope. Uh, Neville, it is your go. Your oh, movement thanks, is still halved. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Neville's gonna dust himself off. Watch Nigel as he ran off. Just for the grimace. And uh, move up to here and comfort Doggo. <laughs> Helen, it's your go again. Right. Hmm. I'll attack it again with my sword. Let's do it. Okay, make an uh, attack roll against it. That is just a miss, I'm afraid. Damn. I'll do my arm strike though, Pete. Yep, of course. That will hit, yeah. man. Hey. Oh, your damage on your arm strike. Hello. Oh, five points of damage. By being surrounded, this thing still isn't flanked. No, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't flank it. No. Uh, is that your turn, Helen? Or I think it's yeah, I couldn't flank it. So I forgot. Never mind. <laughs> I think it's impossible now because Farah's on the floor. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Any any anything else, Helen, or is that it? That's all for me. Thank cool. you. Cool. Pitch is your go. You've seen Farrah go down. Yeah, Pitch is worried for Farrah, so he will turn to her and using his. Well, no, Pitch wouldn't hesitate. He will turn towards Farrah. He will hold out his hand, and he'll say, "Stand up, Farrah," and he'll cast Healing Word on her. Okay. Oh. Uh, boop. Seven points of healing. Very nice. nice. <sighs> Thank you. And then with his main action, he will stab at a thing. Stab at a thing. That's a miss, unfortunately. Yeah. Ostred. Ostred will move around here. Yep. Do you want As a flanking? Bird, he'll cast Searing Smite. <gasps> okay. Mm. Oh, wait. Why is it telling me to drag dice? I don't want to drag dice. Ignore that. So um, constitution save. No, but it's not yet. It's when he hits. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. You're, he's currently concentrating on the Searing Smite spell. Okay, so you're concentrating. So what yeah. does that do, Kieran? Well, it doesn't matter. He hasn't hit yet. Okay. Um, it's when you next hit, so... When you when... next hit? Yeah. Okay. What does your mace look like, Osdred? It's not a mace, it's a battle axe. Oh, nice. Is it, like, red hot? <laughs> You'd have no. advantage, because Farah's up again now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's glowing. Doom of Foyne's, like, green energy. Ooh. Yes! Had 19 to hit, will definitely hit, so roll damage. Oof, so I'm taking it as one handed because you're yeah. holding a shield, so that's 8 points of damage, bludgeoning. The the armor has, smite. Yeah, the armor has to have DC 11, 11 constitution saving throw, that's absolutely fine. Let's do that right now. Oh no. So it takes four yeah. points of fire damage. Yeah. It is looking very rough and very... You've torn this thing asunder with those two... That strike, Osdred, and the searing smite being burnt into its chest as the armour begins to sort of melt away in the middle of it, but it's still standing. Can weak Nigel finish it off? Go on, it's going to attempt to smack him with his axe again, and he's okay. going to go straight for the heart. Okay. Where the heart would be if it was actually a person. Yeah, roll for a roll to hit. Uh, come on. Yes, no. That'll definitely hit. Hey. Roll for damage. This is big. I want to see that number. Oh. Don't know why I rolled two dice, but yeah, that's still ten points of slashing damage, which is more yes. enough than Nigel. How do you want to do this? It's gonna sort of go in. between from where the neck is down into the chest and it's just going to crumble to the floor. Beautiful. All empty pieces of armour. And with that, 
combat does finish. <sighs> Farrah like holds a chest for it like everybody. Good <laughs> 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 she sort of glares over at Neville. Oh, I hate how much I love Neville. I know, me too. <laughs> that was quite impressive, everyone. Thanks for the help, Neville. No, not a problem. Maybe if I was still on the ground in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will bring our first session to an end. Woohoo! Uh... Amazing. Everyone levels up to level Yikes. 10. Yep, level 10. <laughs> no, no level up, I'm afraid. <laughs> no. Bullshit. When'd you get... When'd you get key points, George? I wanna see the... Uh, I wanna see oh, Helen yeah. beating the shit out of stuff with key points. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Wait and see. I think it's level Must 2. Be level 2, yeah. Oh. Yeah, starting at second level you get your key points. So good. So cool. Yeah, I oh, hope man. I hope everyone enjoyed the first session of Strahd. Yeah. Yeah, man, yeah. that was so good and good scary test. and cool. I have so many questions. Oh. I've got four pages of notes. Yeah, feel free to ask me any questions that everyone's got. Um, be out outside the session or message me or whatever if you need to. And happy to try and answer as much as I can. I think the kids are ghosts because everything's gonna be a ghost. Ooh. I think the kids are. Actually, clones of Ozdred, and he is Strahd, and he's playing us all for fools. <laughs> His <laughs> real name is Ozdred. I think that Druinas and those guys all sent us here to just fucking die. Well, they oh. potentially. We're the weak links. Oh yeah. my god. I think it's just Torres though, because Druinas didn't seem like he knew much. What and, then, and the um. And she wanted to get rid of her bastard nephew. That's what I think. She I want to know what's going on with the basement. They said basement. There's no basement. Yeah. Well, I guess you'll have to find out, won't you? Yeah, yeah it's definitely not a trap. Maybe somebody <laughs> should jump down the little food shaft. I said, I made Pitch say, <laughs> maybe you should take back Mr. Snufflelumps or whatever his name is. Snufflax. I was like, maybe you should take him back, Nige. Now he's gone. Yeah, because I, you no. made me think those kids were trustworthy. You <laughs> Those dogs mm -hmm. dead if they try and escape with Mr. Snufflax. <laughs> yep, we as will dead, hunt them to the ends of the earth. As dead as our relationship when you try to convince me I can trust <laughs> them. <laughs> On your second character is going to be Horatio Snuffleax, the older brother. Yes. <laughs> what have you done with my brother? Is it going to be like a Taken situation? Yes. <laughs> I have a very specific set of skills. The Snuffleax family has a very specific set of skills. <laughs> Mostly cuddling. Love that. Great. <laughs> but I don't need cute demeanor. Like... Fuck. I thought I'd hate Neville. I really did. And I fucking love him so much. God damn it, Stefan. God fucking damn it. I need, yep. to, I need to adjust everyone's token size. It's just so much fun watching, like, seeing Steph completely lit off the chain in terms of RP. Yeah. Doesn't even have to pretend to give a shit about combat now. <laughs> now, he, now he can just wander around and do whatever he likes. <laughs> So chill in the chair good. while all the battle That was happened. so funny, snoozing <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah, I hope I created a spooky atmosphere for everyone. Mm. Yeah, I like the mist. Yeah, yeah that That's mist scary. is creeping oh. me out. I still think that it's mist like is, lead, is trying yeah. to lead us here for something. Yeah. I think if, if Pitch hadn't spoken to Farrah and Farrah said, we're definitely first. I think Pitch might have gone more after those kids in the mist. Which yeah. would have been bad! Yup. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... What was I gonna say? I was gonna say something, but I can't remember what it was now. Never mind. 
Yeah, I did not expect you to get this far. That's what I was going to say in the first session. But I did, I did, yeah. I did trim down a lot of stuff in Daggerford to kind of make it a bit more streamlined because I wanted to get you guys into Barovia in the first session properly. I was so happy. I asked yeah. Lewis before, and I was like, "Do you think we'll get into combat?" And he said no. And then when I, he was like, "Roll initiative," yeah. I was like, "Yeah!" yeah just right at the end. <laughs> 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 What's that, Kieran? On a sword coast. Yeah. Yeah. No one <laughs> putting the pieces together. Yeah. Well, I think the first time they get a decent rest, we're going to have to have a proper conversation. Yeah. Because so far, Dred's mainly just said that to pitch, right? Yeah, he's just been saying it like, we're somewhere else, man! <laughs> 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 I liked that no, Ostred saying. You did saying. ask Farrah about the plants and stuff, so. Yeah, that's true. I liked how Ostred is saying that because it kind of makes sense with him being a religious man that he might have that kind of insight. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was trying to take note of everything that was different, like the river being like, there aren't any rivers. How is it a river? Yeah, I, that was very really <laughs> yeah. smart. I like that a lot. That was cool. Yeah. What's oh. like Mirage? I hope Neville gets the whole campaign without fighting and not dying. <laughs> Just survives the entire thing. <laughs> Go back, Auntie. You should, Auntie. You should see what I did. Oh my God, <laughs> I was so <laughs> badass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is just like the lone survivor. <laughs> I punched a wolf right between the eyes. <laughs> It's going to be, at the end of the campaign, it's just going to be Strahd with Mr. Snuffleaxer sat on his knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still convinced that Neville's going to eventually kill Strahd with a punch to the face. I just, I just <laughs> feel it. It's going to happen. Yeah. Bonk. I hope he might whip like comes and then he gets whipped and then Neville like flies in with a punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll do it. He'll like cross his arms so it's like a crucifix and then... No, I think he's lagging out. Yeah, he lagged out. Oh. Hello? God, Steph. Cut man. out for a second, Steph. Crucifix oh. punch. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. Maybe you should get a silver ring with a crucifix on it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but that would, that would be smart and Neville don't wear silver. He looks gold. <laughs> <laughs> I have recorded this, by the way, so I'll be uploading it to YouTube if you want to rewatch any of it. So sweet, cool. definitely will. Cool, right? I'm gonna go now because I desperately need to piss and I really want some food. So yeah, me too. My bladder's okay. actually gonna yeah. explode. Yeah, same. Yeah. In the oven. Drank I'm so going... much water during this session. Yeah, same. Mm. Oh god. Oh, it's fun to get into it, though, guys. Really excited. That was awesome. Yeah, Everything I wanted. The Thank food. you, Lewis. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. See you later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.